Chris and welcome to the SEC on ESPN. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. The undefeated Missouri Tigers look to shake up the SEC East as they visit Georgia. The Bulldogs, despite major injuries to key players, hold out hope for a conference title and perhaps the national championship. Georgia and Florida both 3-0 in SEC East play. The Gators have a big one later today, taking on LSU. Missouri's played just one league game, but only the Tigers and Alabama remain unbeaten overall in the SEC. Aaron Murray last week set the all-time SEC passing mark. Today, he looks to break Tim Tebow's record for total offense in conference play, but he'll have to do it with his forces depleted. More on that in a moment. Georgia won the toss. This tells you how they feel about the injuries. They elected to defer. They're putting their defense, which is last in a lot of categories of the SEC, on the field first against a potent Missouri offense. And there's no question that the Georgia Bulldogs are going to have to rally together to overcome these injuries. Can't use it as an excuse, and that's what Mark Rick said to him last night. So we'll have to wait on Aaron Murray, and we'll get to see James Franklin momentarily is having a terrific season. Marcus Murphy takes a knee. It will come out to the 25. There's a little pushing and shoving after the play, but no penalty markers. You see the numbers on the season for Franklin. Remember last year, he played through shoulder and knee injuries, had a poor season. Two years ago, this was a dynamic quarterback. Seems like he's back to that here in 2013. There's no question. This Missouri offense is one of the most explosive in the country. I know that people, we haven't talked a whole lot about Missouri because they haven't played the toughest of competition. But make no mistake, you're going to see a high-profile and prolific offense today. They lead the SEC in rushing. They are eighth in the country in scoring. A goal with an empty set here for Franklin on first down. And his pass is caught for a first down at the 32-yard line by Green Beckham, his 24th catch on the season, 12 yards. The thing that's impressive with this Missouri offense is their balance. Henry Josie is their running back, number 20. Very explosive player. And then on defense, Ray Drew has played the best in the front seven for Georgia. Franklin in trouble on first down from his 37. He finds Green Beckham again, a short gain of only a couple yards. And already you see the pace of Missouri's offense. They are going to go as fast as they possibly can. It's very difficult to stop this offense with the talent that they have on the perimeter with guys like Doriel Greenbeck and Marcus Lucas and Damian Washington. Huge receivers and depth at running back. Four rushers with 290 yards or more, including the quarterback. Here's Henry Josie, who's drilled by Ray Drew and dropped after a one-yard game. It'll bring up third and long. Jordan Jenkins was in there first. They need him to play well. He's been up and down this year. Well, there's going to be a lot of substitutions defensively for Georgia. They like to roll six or seven guys on that three-man defensive front. They bring in their pass rushers here on third and six, third and seven. Leonard Floyd, the true freshman, has been the guy, number 89, 84, that has been able to get to the quarterback. Georgia last in the SEC in third down defense. And Franklin in trouble. Down he goes at the 27. There's Floyd, his fourth sack of the season. I was talking with Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, before the game. He said, this kid is going to be special. He's got power. He's only 220 pounds. He hasn't grown into his body, but he's got that burst and explosion. Todd Grantham said he's got more of it than Jarvis Jones even did. And once he learns how to play the game on a consistent basis, he could be very special. Brinzer punting, and Georgia coming after it. And Brinzer got hit, but there's no flag down. On the return, it's Reggie Davis. And Davis up to the 40-yard line. So here are the five guys that Aaron Murray will not have for at least today. Keith Marshall and Justin Scott Wesley both tore their ACLs and went over Tennessee last week, so they're done for the year. So here are the five guys that Murray will throw to and hand off to, including J.J. Green, who rushed for 129 yards against Tennessee, and Rantavius Wooten with a game-tying touchdown catch in the final seconds to send the game to overtime last week, and Georgia eventually won that game by three. Murray. 
Murray, who's been brilliant so far in conference play, going deep on first down, and it's broken up. Incomplete. Intended for Conley, Braylon Webb was there to defend the pass. So, Grease, for Aaron Murray, what does this do to his psyche with all these new players out there? In well, offense? I think you know, quite simply, Dave, this will be the biggest challenge in Aaron Murray's career at Georgia. He's been through a lot. There's been a lot of things said about how he's played in big games in years past. The SEC championship last year was a difficult loss. What he's going to go through the next two weeks specifically will be the toughest challenge he'll face. And he's able to dump it off here with pressure coming and a big hit in the secondary by Ponder on the receiver, J.J. Green. It's a four-yard gain. It'll bring up third down at about six. And I think the reason it's going to be so challenging for him is there's so many new pieces and you don't know as a quarterback who you can trust. Right? When you get into situations like this, third downs, late in the game, who's the guy I can trust that's going to be where I'm supposed to or he's supposed to be and I can get the football to him? Conley is the leading receiver among the guys that are healthy with 20. Uh, 21 now, as you saw him catch. Or an incompletion about his F pass was off target. Hard to tell if that was uh, the receiver's fault. True freshman Reggie Davis or just a bad throw. So one completion, two incompletions on that three and out for Georgia. And when you watch this Georgia offense, the thing you need to look out for are errant throws or throws where he's not the communication is not there the receiver's not where you think he's going to be that's the first example right there where a ball that was thrown looked like it was thrown for a hitch and the receiver ran it out those are the kinds of things that george is going to have to overcome to win this game colin barber healthy enough to punt suffered a concussion after a block punt and was returned for a touchdown last week they've had all kinds of issues on special teams at a short kick their catch made at the 22 by marcus murphy Early on here between the hedges, no score, Missouri and Georgia. Back here in Athens, no score early on between Georgia and Missouri. Welcome you into the booth along with Brian Greasy. I'm Dave Fash, Tom Luganville down on the field. You've been where Aaron Murray currently is. How tough is it when he drops back to throw and he doesn't recognize the guys he's throwing to? Well, it's not a good feeling. I, I had that feeling when I played for the Denver Broncos. We had Rod Smith, Ed McCaffrey, Shannon Sharp, and Terrell Davis all out. And when you play against the team, we were playing against the Redskins, Champ Bailey, who can cover anybody, and you go back and you don't know where you can go with the football because guys are locked down and it starts to feel claustrophobic as a quarterback and Aaron Murray's got to fight through that today. Franklin hands it off to Hansbro and he dives across the 25 and out near the 28 yard line for a gain of about five on the play. And they're going to have to score some points today. Obviously, Missouri, I think this offense, you can't stop them all day. Franklin to the flat, and good play as Green Beckham pulls it in, and he was greeted immediately by Shaq Wiggins, a true freshman corner. 5'10", 165 pounds, bringing down 6'6", 225. Loss on the play, brings up third down. Gotta have a plan for Leonard Floyd. He's at the top of the screen. He sacked Franklin on third down in the previous possession. And Franklin in trouble, incomplete. Again, pressure on the quarterback. And a penalty marker, a late flag thrown. Jimmy Hunt, the intended receiver. A linebacker, Rameek Wilson, was covering. And this should be an automatic first down for Mizzou. Yeah, Wilson was just trying to, yeah, that's a clearly a hold there, and I think... Pass interference on the defense, number 51. Ball will be placed at the start of the foul, automatic first down. There's so many weapons on this Missouri offense. You, you, you know everybody knows about Green Beckham, everybody knows about Washington and Sasser, and then you get a guy like Jimmy Hunt that on the inside can get matched up with a linebacker, and that's a, a mismatch in favor of Missouri. Franklin nailed as he throws, and it's complete. In the Georgia territory is Marcus Lucas all the way to the 42-yard line. 28-yard pass play. Marcus Lucas loves to be in the slot. He's on Josh Harvey Clemens, and he just sticks it at the top of the route. And as soon as James Franklin sees too deep coverage, he knows he's got the middle of the field. Hansborough stood up and slammed down by Josh Harvey Clemens. Six-foot-five safety. 
Only two yards on the carry as Missouri continues to go with its quick paced offense. I think Missouri needs to open up the running lanes with the passing game. They've got to throw it down the field early in this game to open up. Franklin to throw. In trouble. Sacked for the second time. Garrison Smith gets him back near midfield. And a much maligned secondary. Give him credit. Nowhere to go with the ball. And then we get the pressure up the middle. Garrison Smith, not normally known as a pass rusher. He's a 3-4, two-gapping nose guard at 300, 300 pounds, but he gets to the quarterback. So it's third down and 17. Missouri has to get to the 32, and a nice play there by Wiggins stepping in front of a pass intended for LaDamian Washington. So Wiggins, who started against Tennessee, gets the start today with a pass breakup and a nice play out in space against Green Beckham earlier on this drive as well. Uh, give Georgia's defense credit. They have been much maligned throughout this uh, early part of the season, but to come out against this offense and get two stops early, despite the fact that they gave up a big plays, give them credit. Kick angle toward the uh, far side. There was a whistle. A timeout. I think Georgia wanted to get a timeout. Perhaps not enough players on the field for Georgia there. Prior to the snap, timeout. Georgia, their first timeout in the first half. Again, they've had issues on special teams this year, and so Mark Rick deciding to use a timeout here on teams at the nine and a half mark of the first. Four years ago to the day the first contest played at Sanford Stadium, then it's at 30,000, a little bit more now, close to 93,000 here between the hedges for Georgia and Missouri. A high snap of the punt away by Grinzer. And McGowan under it. He's got it just shy of the 15 yard line as we say hello to Reese Davis in the studio. Hello, Dave. A lot of great games going on. Taco Bell Studio update. Michigan State has the best rush defense in the country. They allow 50 yards per game. Well, they just allowed 64 on one play to Tevin Coleman. Longest play from scrimmage against Michigan State this year. Hoosiers up 7 0 in the first. And remember, Indiana blew out Penn State last week. Georgia with a first and 10 on its 14-yard line. Again, no Todd Gurley. Missed the Tennessee game with a left ankle injury. Out again today. And Murray to throw. Out on the flat. That's Brendan Douglas, true freshman running back, and he is the subject of Tom Luganville's Georgia impact players. Well, impact players for Georgia, obviously the two running backs in the backfield. J.J. Green, Brandon Douglas, two true freshmen. J.J. Green was a mid-year enrollee and was originally recruited to play corner. Mark Richt and the staff move him to offense. As we've seen so far right now, Mike Bobo, offensive coordinator, trying to get those guys implemented in a way where they don't have to pass protect. Here is Douglas, and he breaks tackles. Appears to have the first down at the 26-yard line. Gain of 11. It is a first down. He and Simon eventually on the tackle. This is just a counter on the weak side, and Kenshaw Brothers right there, the linebacker. That's his play to make. Good cut upfield from Brendan Douglas. That's what you're going to see. Not a lot of speed to the edge and flash from Douglas, but he will get those tough yards in between the tackles. Douglas, 10 attempts last week against Tennessee, but had that big reception, 32 yards to set up the game-tying touchdown against Tennessee. As McGowan, or uh, Douglas rather, rips through a couple of tackles, gain of seven on the play. Well, you notice right now, Georgia just protecting with five up front, releasing the backs. Two areas with true freshmen that you've got to be concerned about. Pass protection and ball security. So right now, again, Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, doing all he can to minimize any potential mistakes from the young freshman in the backfield as we now see J.J. Green entering the game. Well, that's, that's, that's sometimes a difficult uh, thing to understand for the casual fan is, isn't it easier to protect than it is to let your quarterback be exposed? And rather than have a running back try to block or read a linebacker, just free release him and let the quarterback throw it quick. Green spun down by Andrew Wilson. Gain of a yard, so third down and short coming up. 
it takes the it takes the mental aspect out of the hands of the running back and puts it in the quarterback who's your best player on offense and who has to really shoulder the load for Georgia. Might see Quavon Hicks, big fullback, get some work at running back if need be for Georgia today. As there's some movement. The flag down and drop ball by Towns. Marcus Golden came across. Was he drawn off? Offside defense, 33. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. This is one of the elements of college football that we don't see very much. Aaron Murray, a veteran quarterback. Take a listen. Hard count. Great job on third and three, four, five. Veteran quarterbacks will know and communicate in the huddle. Hey, give me a second here. I'm just going to try to get a cheap one. And that's big, especially when you're dealing with so many injuries to get a first down. I right, move it to the Georgia 39. And Murray swings it out to the 44-yard line. Michael Erdman, who hasn't even traveled yet with the team, <laughs> gets his first catch of the season. Erdman's a scout team guy. There's two scout team guys we're going to see today. Ken Towns. Blake Tibbs and Erdman. I mean, these guys, they haven't they haven't had any snaps with Aaron Murray, even in practice outside of this week. So uh, for him to come and contribute like he is, give him credit. Here's Green on second down, picks a hole. And has a first down to the 49-yard line. Going to be interesting to watch Aaron Murray and how he interacts with a lot of these young players, both in the huddle and on the sideline. Good run by Green. Yeah, absolutely, and that's going to help if they can get that running game established. You know, the thing about Georgia's offense that's been so impressive early in this season has been the balance of running the ball and then throwing it downfield to guys like Scott Wesley. I think you're going to have to find a new normal if you're Mike Bobo, and that is running the ball almost primarily inside the tackles because you don't have the speed to get outside, and then the play-action pass to tight ends off of it. There's Green getting the pitch. And brought down for a loss on the play. Kentrell Brothers able to track down the back. I mean, just think about what Georgia went from. You and Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall, two of the best backs, not just in the conference, in the country. Yeah. And then you go to guys who are true freshmen, who are undersized, who haven't played, who barely practiced with the first group. Yeah. Mark Rick said he's never seen anything like it, and we sat with him yesterday. And it's the coach's worst nightmare. It really is. And, and as bad as that is, the next nightmare is if anybody gets hurt in this game, you still got to go play it through these kids, right? Another run play here on second and long. And Green in trouble. Another negative play. Grabbed by Harold Brantley and thrown down. Harold Brantley is the best player up front for Missouri. He's young. He's only a redshirt freshman. He's 6'3", 290 pounds. He's still learning how to play the position. But the Missouri coaches are very excited about his ability both to stop the run and to rush the passer. He's going to have to be accounted for for Georgia. And keep an eye on 52. Michael Sam, who leads the SEC in sacks and tackles for a loss. An obvious passing situation here, third and 12. And Murray in trouble, and guess who? Sam right there with the sack. So they get to midfield and then go backwards in three plays and have to kick. That's Colton Houston, the right tackle. Take a look. Just He sets too high, and Sam just goes right inside of him. And, and Sam is a, is a very heady player, understands sets from tackles, and if he sets high, he's going to go underneath in a hurry. There was a penalty flag on the play, and it's offside. A late flag thrown. So offside and another opportunity here for Georgia. Even the scoreboard had it fourth down and 20. They change it now as Georgia almost drew another offside penalty. Already two on Missouri on this possession. If you're Missouri and you come on the road against Georgia, I know they're down a couple players, but you do not want to give number 11 a second chance. Here's a screen. And again, breaking attack tackle is Douglas, close to the first down at the 40-yard line. Matt White had him wrapped up in space, but Douglas able to power through the tackle, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs. Wow, penalties, mistakes early for Missouri. 
Great play call there from Mike Bobo. Just a short little slip screen to the back. If he breaks a tackle and gets a first down, great. If not, you still have an opportunity on fourth and short. Tenth play of the drive on the Mizzou 40-yard line. Play action, and Murray dumps it off, or attempts to anyway, to Quavon Hicks. We talked about him earlier, 260-pound pullback. He's been banged up, didn't practice until Wednesday because of knee and ankle problems, although that didn't impact his hands. No, he's, well, that was a difficult catch. I've always thrown a little bit behind him, but Quavon Hicks, you know, losing all this talent on offense, Quavon Hicks becomes a guy that you might want to feature if you're Mike Vogel because he's a wrecking ball, not only a blocker, but he can run the ball well. Don't you love that face mask? I right hate to there. see that as a middle linebacker coming <laughs> through the line. <laughs> Murray stepping up, wide open in the middle of the field is Wooten to the 14-yard line of Missouri, a 26-yard pass play. Uh, and it was well designed. They run Red McGowan right up the middle, and then Wooten is just going to come in underneath him. This is the linebacker's play to make, and the drop by the linebacker is out by the hash. It needs to be in the middle of the field, wide open for Aaron Murray. Those are the kinds of mistakes that you cannot make against Aaron Murray. He will make you pay. Remember, this drive should have stopped, should have ended around midfield, but an offside penalty on Missouri. And so the Bulldogs now running the 12th play on this drive, which started back near their 15-yard line. They possessed it for five and a half minutes. Murray with a quick throw. There was contact, and here comes the play. It was intended for Conley. Randy Ponder got there too soon. Another penalty marker on Missouri here on this drive. Yeah, and Ponder just tried to time it up, and uh, he got there a little too soon. Pass interference on the defense, number seven. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So the third penalty accepted by Georgia against Missouri on this possession. And Ponder is just trying to get inside on a slant. Corner is taught to get inside to try to pick that ball off, but he just got there a little bit too soon and ran into Conley. Remember, Missouri, the least penalized team in the conference at four per game. They got three on this possession. First and goal, Murray. Flushed out. Touchdown! Brendan Douglas with a touchdown grab, and Georgia strikes first. That'll take the nerves out of a true freshman playing tailback. Coaches said they love Douglas's instincts, and he showed them on that play. Just his second catch this season, his first touchdown reception. And the point after makes it 7-0 Georgia. They wanted to get him the ball quick on a screen. It wasn't there. It just by a little bit of time, Douglas finds a spot in the end zone and the first touchdown reception for the true freshman. Georgia takes a 7-0 lead. Great awareness by Brandon Douglas. Take a look. They wanted to just run a, a little screen route here, but when Douglas gets to the point, it's covered. Aaron Murray sees it right there, guys. See, he's looking back for the ball, but it's covered, so he doesn't panic. He just gets behind the linebacker, allows Aaron Murray to buy a little bit of time, and with great feel, gets the touchdown. That's a great example of the fundamentals and instincts of a young running back paying off. And now 15 touchdown passes on the season for Aaron Murray in conference games. He has 12 TD passes and only one interception. Remember, in previous years, he had the rap of not playing his best in the big games and not winning the big games. So far this year, 2-1 and one against ranked teams, and he's had terrific numbers. Against LSU, South Carolina, four touchdowns apiece in each contest. He's arguably the most battle-tested quarterback this season in college football with what he's had to do for his team. Their one loss was against Clemson in the opener on the road. Short kickoff, Murray on the return for Missouri. And he's grabbed from behind at the 21-yard line. Missouri back on offense when we return to Athens. Here, Reese, it is 7-0. Georgia on top of the Missouri Tigers. The zoo back on offense. So hard to gauge Missouri's first season in the SEC 2012 because of injuries in particular to the quarterback, James Franklin. And he's back having a terrific season. Got Mizzou off to a 5-0 start, ranked 25th. 
Franklin to throw on first down. Wide open, middle of the field, and out past the 40-yard line is Bud Sasser. So a gain of over 20 on first and 10. Uh, so much pressure, and it's so easy for Missouri. They just flank the wide the running back in the flat, and that attracts the linebacker, and there's nobody left. Franklin just turns and stands and fires complete. Into Georgia territory is Marcus Lucas. His second catch, another first down, gain of 12. Missouri really needs to get something on the board early in this game to get that confidence on the road that they can not only compete in this game but win. I, down the field before the game, I felt a sense of confidence from this Missouri team that they're going to come in and play well. Franklin. And that pass undershot, incomplete. Darius White was the intended receiver. Franklin, think about it. Johnny Manziel's the only player in the SEC right now that has more yards of total offense per game than Franklin. That says a lot about this kid. Yeah, yeah, and, and in fairness, they haven't played, you know, Johnny Manziel played Alabama, and he had a lot, a lot of yeah. yards, and, and, you know, Missouri hasn't played the toughest schedule, but, but they've played some good teams. And they beat Indiana, and... Getting outside is Marcus Murphy. Inside the Georgia 35 to the 32. That's a 15-yard run. We got three running backs that we've seen so far, and they all look the same. About 5'9, 190 pounds. That's Murphy, who is averaging over eight yards per carry on the season. Second time here in the first quarter, the Missouri's been in Georgia territory. Murphy again trying to get outside. Did a good job keeping his feet, but didn't get any positive yards. Josh Dawson on the stop. Well, we were talking to offensive coordinator Josh Henson from Missouri this week. He said, I don't really have to know which back is in the game, if it's Murphy or if it's Hansborough or if it's Josie. I feel comfortable with each of them doing every aspect of our offense, and that's a really comfortable, a nice place to be as a play caller to have three healthy backs. Georgia would love to have that. Franklin to Washington, and he's to the 20-yard line for another first down. Damian Swan on the stop. That's no contest there. Swan at 5'11 against 6'4-inch LaDamian Washington. Well, and if you're going to play off on, on these wide receivers, James Franklin is smart enough just to give him the ball in the hitch and get eight or nine yards and get a first down for Georgia. At some point, you're going to have to come up and challenge these receivers at the line of scrimmage. That's also dangerous, too, though. It is. Here's Franklin, and boy, he has got a lot of running room inside the 10, dives to the 5. We don't see him running as often as he did in 2011 when he rushed for almost 1,000 yards, but he's still effective. That's 16 yards. Why well, Ray Drew was unblocked right in the middle of the line of scrimmage, and James Franklin at 230 pounds, still a good enough, quick enough athlete to make him miss, and then there was nobody left. So first and goals. We near one minute to go here in the first. Franklin, fade, and over. Corey Moore, one of the bigger players in the secondary. Guy you like, 6'2 uh, safety. Yeah, Georgia's going to have to use some of their safeties to cover these tall wide receivers because their corners aren't big enough. And Corey Moore is 6'2, Josh Harvey Clemens is 6'5. If you don't put those guys outside on, on some of these wide receivers that are all over 6'4, you're going to have a, tr a problem. They're strong enough, too, to get their hands on them. And yeah force them to change their route. Hold them up if they can. Here's second and goal. Franklin takes off. And it's a touchdown for Missouri. Third rushing touchdown for James Franklin. So hard to defend the entire field. You have those guys on the outside, those tall wide receivers, and you've got to put two or three guys out there. And then there's no linebackers left. And as soon as James Franklin sees a, a crease, he's easy for him to get in the end zone. Andrew Baggett on for the point after, after a nine play, 79 yard drive that took less than three minutes. And we are tied at seven. Good response by Missouri on the road as James Franklin with his third rushing touchdown of the season ties it up here between the hedges.
This evening on ESPN, we have a Big Ten SEC doubleheader at 5 Eastern. Michigan is taking on Penn State in Happy Valley. And then tonight, we talked about Johnny Menzel earlier, AM and Ole Miss at 8.30. Menzel's numbers very similar here in 2013 to what they were last year when he won the Heisman Trophy. James Franklin, who is number two in the SEC in total offense behind Manziel. Seven of ten passing, 86 yards and a rushing touchdown here in the first quarter. It's amazing what you can do when you're healthy, isn't it? Originally injured uh, his shoulder a couple of years ago against, or last year against George after hurting it in the spring. Here's J.J. Green on the return, tiptoes to the 15-yard line. Well, and it's pick your poison, right? If you're going to try to guard the outside of the field, three on two at the top on the receivers, three on two on the bottom, and what happens is that leaves the middle of the field wide open for James Franklin. The middle linebacker, Herrera, has to take the back, and there's nobody left. I don't blame Georgia for playing them that way because if it wasn't like that, they would throw the fade to the 6'6 six, six wide receiver for a touchdown. But this is why this offense this year has been so explosive, and James Franklin has operated it to perfection. And Georgia, for the second straight drive, will start around its 15. It marched down the field and scored last time. They're going to run Green off left tackle here, and he plows forward to the 20 for about five yards. Brought down by Vincent and Darvin Ruiz. I think we have seen now through the first quarter of this football game, Georgia's new approach. You know, they, they have been two tight ends, tight end, fullback. They've been a little bit more conservative and running the football inside the tackles, and it's a, it's a product of not having the kind of guys out there that they had early in the year. And Missouri stacking the box here. Murray rolling out on second down. And throws it in the dirt. He was being chased by Sam. Connolly was the intended receiver. So it's third down and five. And I think the net net of all of that is the margin for error for, for Aaron Murray is now so much shorter, smaller. He can't afford to miss the plays when they're there. And, and this entire team, I think, when you're playing a team like Missouri, Mark Rick understands they're going to score points. And on offense, we can't waste possessions. You've got to get something going on offense to keep up with Missouri. See if Missouri stays on side. They do as Murray to Wooten. And yeah, there are two Tigers out there, so Wooten is wrapped up. Gain of only a couple, and it's going to be fourth down. E.J. Gaines, three-year starter, their best corner, out there made the stop. And one of the best, not just for Missouri, but in the SEC, an outstanding player. So that's the end of the first quarter. Georgia will punt. When we come back, we're tied at seven. And yeah, Missouri knows that league well. In the second year for the Tigers in the SEC, their first league game was against Georgia last year in Columbia. Missouri led that game late. But Jarvis Jones took it over with a couple of sacks, two forced fumbles, and a pick. Ended up beating the Bulldogs 41-20. Low snap, but the punt away from Barber. Short kick, and Missouri's going to have very good field position. It was batted by Georgia around the 48-yard line. Only a 30-yard punt. Well, let's get Tom Luganville in here. we got a penalty flag. Tom, as you're watching Aaron Murray interact with these inexperienced receivers and running back, what are you seeing? Well, I'm seeing Aaron Murray having to kind of babysit to some degree, particularly with the backs in the backfield, just making sure they're aligned correctly on that second series, the touchdown drive for Georgia. Brendan Douglas went the wrong way on the play pass, and they're in constant communication. The concern is if you become so concerned with everybody else around you and what they're doing and making sure it's right, then the issue becomes how do I go about my normal process and mode of operation to produce a positive end result at the end of the day? And I think that's a concern for Georgia offensively right now. And just to clean up, uh, Lukes, while you were talking there, there was no foul. There was a penalty flag. They were going to call batting, but uh, no marker thrown for illegal batting. They pick it up. Yeah, I think, you know, just to finish up on, on Lukes' point there, you got to be patient. If you're Aaron Murray, you can't try to do so much. You can't try to do too much. And Mike Bolo's got to help him out, too. If you're having a line, guys, get out of the huddle a little bit faster so that gives yourself some time to get set. And if somebody's not aligned correctly, you can move him. So you've got to anticipate that these things are going to happen as a quarterback. 
Here's Josie on the cutback, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Actually got a couple of yards. Like Franklin, Josie was injured last year, had a knee injury, suffered against Texas in the middle of November, missed the entire 2012 season after multiple surgeries. Had in 2011 almost 1,200 rushing yards. Yeah, he burst onto the scene nationally, and, and it was an awful, horrible injury. He tore a bunch of ligaments in his knees. Great to see him back out here contributing. Got two yards on first down. Now Franklin to the air. And again, an open man. First down, it's LaDamian Washington inside the 35. Gain of 17 on the play. Great timing from this throw from James Franklin. He lets it go before Washington turns around. Take a look from his vantage point. That ball's halfway to Washington before he turns around. You cannot defend great timing on a route like that. And Franklin moving to his left. He's going to run here. And thrown out of bounds at the 30-yard line by Ray Drew. A gain of three. Drew has really picked up his play for Georgia. First-year starter. Highly touted when he came on campus. Had a couple sacks against Tennessee last week. I think Gary Pinkle has taken a different philosophy with James Franklin this year and not having so many design runs for him. They want to keep him healthy. They understand the difference between a healthy James Franklin and not. And so he only wants to run when he has to. Here's Josie into a wall of Bulldogs at the 26-yard line. A gain of four on the play. So how do you, if you're James Franklin and you're a guy that likes to run, what does that do to your <laughs> well, psyche? After having you know, a torn labrum in his shoulder, an MCL last year, a concussion, I don't know if he likes to run as much as you think he does. He might like to throw the ball from the pocket a little bit better this year. Well, he's done well so far in this game. 8 of 11 passing over 100 yards. Pick third down and three. Remember Georgia last in the SEC in third down defense. Mizzou is 0 for 2, though, on third down so far, and the play clock at 5. Franklin, little option pitch. Here's Josie, got a block. First down inside the 20-yard line. And finally stepped out at the 16-yard line, pushed out by Wiggins. We talk so much about these big wide receivers making plays, but look at number 85, Marcus Lucas. Get the block right there on the linebacker, Herrera. These guys do not get enough credit for the edge blocking. They're big for a reason, yes, to go up and catch balls, but also to block in important plays like that. Franklin with a ton of time going to the end zone. Washington is there. Touchdown, Missouri. A perfect throw by James Franklin, and the Tigers have the lead. Damian Washington clearly got the feet in, controlled that ball. He got matched up one-on-one -on -one in the slot with Damian Swan, and Swan has struggled. All the Georgia fans know how much he struggled early this year, and he gets beat again for a touchdown. And the point after makes it 14 to 7. Two straight scores by the Tigers. You believe in this Missouri offense? Yes. And making a lot of people believers. Bad punt gives Missouri the ball right around midfield. And in six plays, it's two minutes and 15 seconds. Franklin to Washington gives the Tigers a seven-point lead here in Athens. Granted, Georgia's defense has struggled this year, giving up points to just about everybody. I think Missouri's showing that offensively what they did against Vanderbilt, 51 points, even though Vandy may not be great. The offense for Missouri is legit. They're explosive, and, and they are not uh, to be taken lightly. I think everybody was thinking about this offense from a year ago when they had so many injuries, and this is a healthy and completely different offense for Gary Pinker. It was AM. Newcomer last year, they made noise in the SEC. Missouri trying to do it here in 2013. Let's go back and look at the touchdown to Washington. He's just going to run a corner out, and there was some miscommunication between Damian Swan and Quincy Mauger. Swan had coverage, but Mauger is a two-deep safety. He's responsible for the deep part of the field. He gets lost in no-man's land. Swan was expecting some help 
from him and didn't get it. So I, I put that on Damian Swan before the break, but actually that was a miscommunication between Mauger and Swan. And this is a reoccurring theme in the secondary with so many young players for Georgia that's really come back to hurt him. Yeah, he's not the normal starter because you have an injury to Trey Matthews. Second straight game he's missed with a hamstring. So Mauger started. Murray to the air on first and ten. Has to step up and throws it deep. One on one coverage. Wooten catches it. And an ankle tackle saves a touchdown at the 30 yard line. Wooten beat EJ Gaines that time. And Murray put it on him for 48 yards. They had the tight end. Rome run just a, a crossing round. Wooten over the top. And Wooten just beat Gaines with speed there. Gaines, as you said, the best defender for Missouri. And Wooten came down with a big play. Wooten had a big game against Tennessee. Six catches, two touchdowns after just two receptions through the first four weeks combined. Ball at the 27 of Missouri. And Douglas gets two. Brought down by Matt Hoke. Second and eight coming up. And that element that, that Wooten brings to the table is so important. As that, I think that's E.J. Gaines who's down on the field that would be a big loss for Missouri he looks shaken up grease on the long pass yep. when he made the uh, tackle on Wooten try to tough it out on that last play his backup is a true freshman Arian Penton back in a moment you've got to love the weekend it's like everyone can Welcome back, E.J. Gaines. Looked like he got shaken up on the long pass play. Watch his legs, they click together here. Right there. Sometimes you do that and it bruises the bottom part of your calf or leg. It can be very painful, but it looks like that's might have, maybe what happened to E.J. Gaines. And if he's out, it's a big loss for this defense for Missouri. As mentioned, his backup is a true freshman, Arian Penton, who has played and the coaches like him. Second and eight for Georgia at the 25-yard line. Here's Murray on the keeper. Wrestle to the ground at the 16-yard line, but it's a first down. Eight of nine for Murray. And I think this is an element that Mike Bobo wants to incorporate is run this, guys. It's just a zone read. You don't make a big living out of it, but nobody expects Aaron Murray to run the ball. But with their top two backs out, he's going to have to assume some of that responsibility in the running game. And that's a great example to get first down. Keith Marshall torn ACL. Todd Gurley day to day with an ankle injury. They got true freshman Brendan Douglas at a tailback now on first down. And Douglas running outside. And he gets cut down at the 12 yard line. Gain of about four. Braylon Webb there defensively for Missouri. This is a big red zone opportunity for Georgia. You've just given up two pretty impressive drives to Missouri. And they've scored easily. You can't come down here and not get uh, points when you're in the red zone for Georgia. Douglas again able to get away from one defender and then stacked up at the 11 yard line. So not much there. Maybe a one yard pickup as CJ Gaines. Going to the Missouri locker room for treatment. Boy, that's a not a good sight for this defense. And what they wanted to do coming in was play more man-to-man -man coverage because of all the injuries to Georgia's offense. If they lose gains, I don't think you can come out and do that. You got to play some soft zones because you don't have that coverage ability of gains. There's third and five for Murray and company. And Murray's pass knocked down, incomplete. Michael Sam had pressure. It's fourth down. Boy, there's good pressure on the inside here. He's trying to get the ball to Douglas on a one-on-one -on -one route with the linebacker. And Sam just got his hand on the football. Sam is quite the pass rusher from the edge. And the two tackles, Colton Houston and Canarius Gates, and Mark Beard was in on that play, the backup tackle. They've got their hands full with Sam. 29-yard field goal try. And Georgia cuts the Missouri lead to four. Michael Sam is making his presence felt as a pass rusher for Mizzou, and the Tigers lead it.
Get your NFL Sunday started on ESPN at 10 a.m. with Sunday NFL Countdown. The game provides the latest news from around the league right up until kickoff this week. Seahawks corner Richard Sherman sits with Darren Woodson to discuss the art of getting his, in his opponent's ear. And before you set your lineups, catch fantasy football now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Our experts predict the top fantasy performers. Dave Patch, Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill in Athens on an 80-degree sunny day. 14-10, Missouri on top. Last time the Tigers started 6-0 was 2010. Year two for them. In the SEC, they won just two conference games a year ago. Georgia, meanwhile, obviously still in the hunt for the SEC title and also for the national title. It's only loss coming week one against Clemson. And we'll come out to the 25 for Mizzou. Here's Reese. Dave, time for an innovative work brought to you by AT&T. This afternoon, Michigan takes on Penn State, and this is what the Nittany Lions will have to deal with is Devin Gardner did a much better job in his last game taking care of the ball. Here in a game against Akron draws all the attention, watching 98 and potentially as a runner, and J.U. Chesson is open, and he would go on and score. Michigan and Penn State, 5 o'clock Eastern time today. Boy, Gardner's been an enigma, and you're a Michigan guy, so you understand what that word means. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to understand with respect to Devin Gardner. I love consistent. Franklin with a swing pass to Murphy and a good play in the open field by Shaq Wiggins. For check in with Tom for an injury update on EJ Gaines. EJ Gaines went into the locker room for further valuation. He's got a right quad strain and is questionable for his return. Now, this is big. Missouri's got 11 interceptions this year. Three of those belong to EJ Gaines. They need him back to match up versus Chris Conley and Rantavius Wooten. And Tom, those 11 picks tied for the most in the country. They had seven all of last year. One yard setback on that pass play, so it's second down and 11. Nine and a half remaining in the second quarter. Missouri by four. Run play, hands blow. Trying to get outside. Drag down. A horse collar tackle. A flag comes in. Harvey Clemens grabbed and yanked immediately and pulled the runner to the ground outside the tackle box. So Josh Harvey Clemens is 6'5. He's so long, and he just gets that hand on the back of the collar there of Hansborough. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Number 25 on the defense. 15 yard penalty is automatic first down. And that's that's to protect the, the legs. You know, sure. when you pull back that way, you can you can blow a knee out really fast. And that's 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 a pretty cut and dry penalty there. George has got to find a way to slow down James Franklin. He's 10 out of 13 to start this game for 118 yards and a touchdown. And this offense has been supremely balanced. 14 runs, 13 passes. I mean, it's, they're playing a numbers game right now with Georgia. Pitch and catch on the outside, and if they try to defend the perimeter, they're just going to hand it off to Hansborough and Josie and Murphy. Franklin completing nearly 70% of his passes on the year. Play action, going deep. Got a man. Overthrow him. Washington was there for a touchdown. Just as we talk about Franklin's accuracy, he misses the open Washington. Well, they had a two-deep coverage. They had just what they wanted, and Georgia defensively cannot run with Washington. That ball thrown about a yard too far. One that James Franklin would love to have back. You see 39 more. This is going to be a reoccurring problem, potentially, for Georgia. If I'm Missouri, I'm going to come right back to that play deep with Washington. And Swan has had his problems at corner this year for Georgia. Second and ten. Franklin's pass tipped. It appeared incomplete. Swan had a better chance to catch the football than Washington that time. Third and ten Yeah, for just Missouri. a miscommunication there, Dave, between Washington and, and James Franklin. Sorry, that was Darius White, who hasn't played a whole lot. They were just going on the same page. White stopped, and... James Franklin was lucky that ball was not intercepted. And the defense, which has struggled on third down, make a play. Get Missouri's offense off the field. Third down and long. Pressure coming. Franklin gets it away, and a diving catch made for a first down. Washington right at midfield. Reaching.
reaches out for it and pulls it in for 11 yards. Great catch, but a better block by Max Copeland right there. 61, the left guard. Herrera was about to unload on James Franklin, and, and Copeland just peeled off and took the hit off the quarterback. Fresh set of downs for Missouri. They might look at this one a little bit longer. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a completed catch. Washington was running that slant. Difficult to tell from that uh, from that angle. From that angle, hard to tell as well. Again, ruling in the field is a catch. Has to be indisputable. Video evidence to overturn it. Pulls that ball. He's got the arm underneath. Wow, great That's catch. A catch. Yes. Great catch from Washington. We had two touchdowns against Vanderbilt. Five touchdown catches on the year. You think any of these receivers for Missouri would start right now for Georgia with the injury problems they have at that position? You know, I, I think any one of these wide receivers, these three guys between Marcus Lucas, Washington, and Doriel Green Beckham, you put them on Georgia's team right now, and they're the best wide receiver on the team that can play. I mean, that's how good these guys are. Green Beckham has been a factor today. Washington and Lucas as well. I want to go back and take a look because the, the big guys up front don't always get the, the, the credit for blocking as we get the call here. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed and completed catch. Let's go back and take a look at, at Copeland's block again. This is a huge play for, for an offensive lineman. He's right here. And he's just going to peel off at the last minute. That would be a huge hit on yeah. James Franklin, and and protecting James Franklin is job number one, right? I mean, we know what happens when when he was hurt a year ago, and Copeland is a senior, 6'3", 300 pounds from Billings, Montana. That was a great play. Former walk-on as our Marlo Herrera was getting a beat on the quarterback. First down at midfield. Missouri ball, four-point lead here in Athens. Trying to stay undefeated on the year. A wide receiver screen they were trying to set up there with Green Beckham, and that pass was too high. You had Sasser, who was ready to engage and block for Green Beckham, but pass was off target. You see the 330 games. Clemson trying to stay unbeaten, taking on Boston College. They have Florida State next week. And Hanford did a great job to get out of trouble in the backfield. He should have lost yardage. Instead, he got about three on the play. Brings up another third down and long for Missouri. Well, and you said it. Third down has been the Achilles heel for Georgia defensively. Last week against Tennessee in the fourth quarter, they gave up some big plays on third and fourth down. They just gave up a third and ten on this drive. They've got to find a way. Somebody has to make a play to get off the field for Georgia. Missouri has to get just past the 40-yard line. And Franklin, his pass incomplete, but a flag is, again, Damian Swan having trouble. Trying to cover LaDamian Washington. It'll be an automatic first down. But these receivers are so big and so physical, and Damian Swan... Is only 5'11, 178 pounds, tries to get over the top and it's just pass interference it's there early. on the defense. Number five, the ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I mean, the ball's going to be complete <laughs> if, Wash, if, if Swan doesn't get all over him. And so you see him trying to press him at the line of scrimmage and Washington able to get inside and then a clear interference call. Six total penalties in the game, all on the defense. First down at the Georgia 41. Franklin hanging around in the pocket. Now takes off and spun forward for minimal gain. Josh Dawson made the hit for Georgia. Think of all the guys they're replacing on this defense. Jarvis Jones, John Jenkins, Alec Ogletree, Bakari Rambo. Yeah. And, and I think that at the beginning of this year, you know, there was some chirping from this defense about how they'd be, it would be easier than they thought to replace those guys. And pretty quickly, you play Clemson and LSU and South Carolina, and you give up as many points as they did, and you get a little bit of humble pie. But I think 
offensive chart starting to find their wind a little bit. Franklin has it complete. Jaleel Clark. And a gain of three or four. Swan on the coverage. So are they targeting Swan in particular, or are they just running their offense? I think they're just running their offense uh, because the other side, you know, you've got two true freshmen playing corner, Shaq Wiggins and Brandon Langley. So it's a dealer's choice right now for James Franklin. The bottom line, Dave, is the biggest mismatch on the field today in this game are the wide receivers for Missouri against the secondary for Georgia. So this is not a big surprise. And Franklin, 12 of 18 for 134 yards passing. And a touchdown. Third down and five. They hand it off here to Murphy. And he's got the first down and more. Able to keep his feet. And Murphy is in. Touchdown, Mizzou. What a spectacular run by Marcus Murphy. 36 yards. They call Murphy the ghost because he just can't see him back there. He's so small behind that offensive line. And he's got such good quickness on the outside. And he's a returner by trade, so he understands when he gets in the open field how to make it to the end zone. The problem in this game for Georgia has not been the offense. The recurring problem for the Bulldogs all year, the defense. They've given up 21 points here with six minutes to go in the second quarter. Missouri on that drive converts a third and ten. And here on third and five, Murphy takes it to the house. And Missouri on top by 11. Well, a lot of people wondering as you're watching the SEC on ESPN whether... Missouri's offense was legitimate, undefeated on the season. Brandon George's defense has struggled, but right now the Bulldogs appear overmatched as Missouri scored 21 points with six to go. Murphy, with a long touchdown run here, is fifth. Well, look at the missed tackles. You got Wiggins and you got Corey Moore, both missed tackles in the open field, and you combine that with the blocking of Lucas and LaDamian Washington on the edge, and Georgia has no answer for Missouri's offense so far in this game. Touchdown drives of 79, 52, and 75 yards for the road team. Those are the kinds of plays that drive defensive coordinators crazy. And Todd Grantham is giving his guys down on the sideline an earful about it. And we'll get Tom Lugendill in here momentarily for more on that. If uh, Georgia's offense can respond, Missouri's done a good job getting some pressure on Aaron Murray. That'll sail through the end zone, and the Bulldogs will start in their 25. Here's Tom. Well, I don't think defensive coordinator Todd Grantham is so much concerned with scheme or mental errors. He's concerned with not being able to tackle. And the way horizontally Missouri spreads you out, I mean, their outside receivers, guys, are lining up midway between the bottom of the numbers and the sideline. So he gets you in space with those big physical receivers. Now, all of a sudden, if you don't break down, it turns a six-yard catch into a 40-yard touchdown play. And right now, there are no answers in tackling for these youngsters on the back end for Georgia. you got to wonder, too, about the confidence with the number of big plays and points they've allowed in defense. Well, there's no question they came into this game with a lack of confidence defensively, and they've been bailed out by their offense, which has been so prolific in scoring. But with the injuries they've had on offense, now this defense is going to be exposed. They fake the end around. In trouble, Murray, and the ball is out. It's picked up by Missouri. Sam taking it in for the Mizzou touchdown. Shane Ray forced the fumble. Michael Sam with a scoop and score. And Missouri's on top 27 to 10. They tried to block Shane Ray with the tight end on the weak side. That's Artie Lynch who just got blown by. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse for Georgia, a defensive scoop and score. You would imagine they'll look at this here to see if the hand motion started going forward. They are reviewing it. Well, that's looks like it's out. Ruling on the field is a fumble. I like that, too, that they ruled on the field fumble because if they ruled it incomplete, yes. you could overturn it and get possession, but you would negate the score. Absolutely. I don't think there was any question there despite the fact that that ball went about a yard forward, it comes out of his hand before his arm starts coming forward. 
It's out right there. Yep. And that's, you know, that's that's tough, tough duty for a tight end on the weak side in Artie Lynch to block a pass rusher and Shane Ray, and it's off a of play action too, so it takes longer to develop. And Aaron Murray was trying to push that ball down the field. Well, you you talked about this being maybe the greatest challenge that Aaron Murray has faced this After year. After further review, the ruling off the field is confirmed. Touchdown. You talked about it being yeah. the greatest challenge. Well, now you're going to be down 18 points, and you're a one-man band. You got to make all the plays if you're him. Well, and I, I wouldn't put anything past Aaron Murray. I mean, he's he has earned the respect uh, of everybody in the SEC. He certainly has the respect of Gary Pinkle and and people around the country for the way that he's played this year. And so, yeah, they're down 18, but down 17, but uh, it's going to be a hard road back. Baggett puts it through. 28 to 10, Missouri on top. Smart play, Michael Sam able to scoop and then outrun Georgia's offensive players for the touchdown. Missouri has scored 14 points in 10 seconds to go up 18 on Georgia. Hard to tell on the last play if it was the tight end or the left tackle, Canarius Gates, who blew the assignment on the sack force fumble by Shane Ray. Well, I don't think it's hard to tell. I think that the Artie Lynch had, had him in protection, and he expected to get help. It was supposed to be a double team, but Gates didn't get back out in time. First fumble recovery of the season for Missouri. Luke's talked earlier about their 11 interceptions coming into today, which ranks tied for first in FBS. Another touchback. We'll go back and take a look. Gates is going to block down, and then he's going to pop back out to try to help one-on-one -on -one with Artie Lynch here. And Lynch will take the outside half. He expects the tackle to be on the inside, and there's a miscommunication between the two of those guys. And little things remember we talked about the margin for error the margin for error for Georgia is razor thin right now because they can't overcome these negative plays with the playmakers that are sitting on the sideline yeah, Gary Pinkle done a terrific job at Missouri in his 13 seasons 10 wins three times since 2007 hoping for it again here in 2013 Murray downfield and it's incomplete let's check in with Reese Dave, getting you up to date on the Red River rivalry. Texas has converted eight out of ten on third down, including this touchdown pass from Case McCoy to Marcus Johnson. And the Longhorns are opening up a first half can on the Sooners, 17-3 to score. A lot of people, Reese, think that's a surprise. And a number of people think this is one as well. 18-point lead for Missouri on the road. Georgia playing without its top three receivers and top two running backs. Green, nice move on the cutback. And a gain of eight yards. Here's Tom. Well, this offense is going to take on the personality of its leader, Aaron Murray. And standing just a few feet from me moments ago, very positive with his team, keeping a calm, level head. He realizes that this team's going to look to him when things aren't going well. Right now, I like his demeanor. He's in control. He's in command. He just needs to get a couple of positive plays under his belt in this series. It would help if they could pick up third down and short. It's one of four. Third down so far this ball game. And Murray pass incomplete. And had it been caught, it would not have been a first down, but they're going to get one here on a penalty. J.J. Green, the intended receiver. It's another defensive penalty, another one that leads to a first down. Seen Missouri do it. Georgia do it a couple times as well. It's Donovan Bonner, a linebacker in coverage. Pass, interfer pass interference on the defense, number eight. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Here he is right here. Just trying to run a, and <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. There's, that's, that's a tough ball to complete there against man-to-man -man coverage. Just go downfield and turn around. The guy's going to be on your back, but uh, Georgia will take it. Anything right now for them to get a first down, they'll take. Murray fakes the run and tried to hit Conley. Again, the defender close to arriving early. Braylon Webb with no penalty flag. There was contact right as the ball got there. Perhaps a tad early, but no that's, penalty marker. That's a great play by Webb to get his hand on that ball, keep his left hand off of the back of the wide receiver, and then to get his right hand on the ball. 
That would have been a completion to Conley. Well done by Webb. It's so hard to play in the secondary with all the rules now, how you can hit people, how you can't, how you can get your hands on guys. That was well done. On second down and long, Murray in trouble, wrapped up and sacked at the 25 by Marcus Golden. Coaches say he's got a terrific motor. Had a sack and a half against Vanderbilt last week. Gets one here. Well, he's a converted linebacker that they gave him some more tickets to training table to get a little bit more weight on him to move him to defensive end, but he still has the athleticism. Offside. And Aaron Murray can't get away from him. Five yard Another penalty Replay, flag. Second down. It appeared to be thrown late. Missouri was already celebrating, but it was offside on Ely. So another big sack negated. We saw it happen earlier with Sam. This one here by Ely. And it's second down and five. Play action for Murray. Green out of the backfield has the first down near midfield. 13 yards for Georgia. First down. And I think the buzzword for Aaron Murray in that huddle right now is patience. Right? Let's not panic. We're down 18 points. Let's just get a couple of first downs here. Get something productive on this drive. Give our defense a little bit of a rest on the sideline. And we're right back in this game. Murray under center and the pitch to Green. And he gets tossed. Marvin Foster comes in there and throws him down. Andrew Wilson as well for Missouri. So no gain on the play. Brings up second down and long. Uh, and, and Green, whether it's Green or Douglas in the backfield, when they come out on first down, you're going to be going against seven, eight-man boxes now because Missouri is not concerned with Rhett McGowan beating them. They're not concerned with Reggie Davis. They are right now trying to stop the run. So it's going to be tough sledding in the running game. Again, you see Murray pointing to Green, who appeared to be lined up incorrectly. Well, look at all the guys from Missouri in the box. There's eight of them in the box right there. Flight clock at three. Murray to the air. Dumps it off to a wide open Arthur Lynch. Oh, he leaps a defender. That'll get the Georgia sideline going. 6'5", 254. Hurdles a defender for a 15-yard gain. <laughs> Sometimes you just need something, something positive to happen, a guy to make a play to get the energy back in the crowd, and Artie Lynch right over the top. Randy Ponder, the defender, went through the legs of big Arthur Lynch there. The ball on the Missouri 35. Brandon Douglas in a tailback. Behind his huge fullback, Wavon Hicks, who blows open the hole, and they get five yards. <laughs> Quavon Hicks, 260 pounds, one of my favorite players watching on tape. Take a look at him. Hello. Boy. That is a collision. Keep your eye on him the rest of this game. He's an important piece of this running attack, and he is physical. Play action for Murray. Steps up, dumps it off. Douglas grabbed at the ankles and brought down inside the 20, but it's another Georgia first down. And I tell you what I like from Mike Bobo right now. He's changing the pace of the game, too. Not getting the huddle. He's trying to get some momentum and some confidence for his offense going no huddle here. Great use of the pace to get this team going. Ninth play of the drive. Play action again. Murray on the rollout. Inside the 10-yard line is Chris Conley. A gain of about eight on the play. Been all checkdowns. Been all checkdowns from Aaron Murray on this drive. He's not taking the risk downfield. Understands to be patient. Just keep moving, getting positive plays. The last three balls he's completed have been the checkdowns. You got Hicks in there on second and two. And Douglas. Ball came Lost out. the ball. Missouri appears to have it. And it is Missouri ball. Marcus Golden with the fumble recovery. As Brendan Douglas says he was down, rolling in the field is a fumble. As you look at Todd Gurley, who's out for this game with an ankle injury. Of course, Keith Marshall done for the year with a knee injury. Let's see if the knee was down here before the ball came out. Nope. Oh, boy. Boy, just when you start getting something going on offense and you get down inside the five, 
And Tom talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast. The thing you worry about with young backs, yeah, you worry about protection, but you also worry about ball security. These guys haven't been hit. They haven't been in a live game. And when you put them out there, all kinds of arms swinging around, you've got to make sure you've got those five points of pressure on the ball and a big turnover. No fumble recoveries through five games for Missouri. Two in the last five minutes. And a big hole. Straight ahead, it's Josie out past the 10. Here's Reese. Dave Lexus halftime report coming up. Texas is playing like Mac Daddies. They're up 20 to 3 on Oklahoma. We'll show you how it's happened. Clowny question, bro, being answered affirmatively by South Carolina against Arkansas. And we'll get you ready for the big afternoon. Mark and Lou getting all geared up for the Lexus halftime report. And when South Carolina goes into the locker room at halftime and sees this score, that'll raise some eyebrows. Absolutely. It's the lone loss for the Gamecocks against Georgia. Inside a minute to go here in the half. Missouri leading by 18. They'll keep it on the ground here. Josie will come up a couple of yards short of the first down. We'll see if Georgia uses a timeout. <laughs> I don't know that I would take a timeout if I were Georgia. I would want this clock to run out because this Missouri offense, you haven't stopped them yet. Third down coming up. One timeout remaining for Mark Rick. All right, today's athletic trivia question. Which three quarterbacks have the most career wins in FBS history? Hmm. I think two of those, two of those are relatively, uh, relatively easy, recent. Well, tell me. Well, I don't want to ruin it for everybody. Well, you said two, so they let everybody guess on the third. Because I think you're right. People, most people know the two. Well, Kellen Moore, Boise right. State, and then you know with the Red River rivalry today, I think you know Case McCoy, his brother Colt. Colt McCoy, sorry, Colt McCoy, and yeah, the third one is relative to this game. Yeah, I'll give you a hint. Aaron Murray is chasing this guy in terms yeah. of uh, school record for wins. Murray came in chasing Tim Tebow, needing 325 yards to pass him for the SEC record for total offense. And He's halfway there. Yep. 155. But his team is down by 18. Big third down here. And Franklin going to throw. Facing pressure. And Franklin is down at the 15-yard line, short of the first down. So Georgia will call its final timeout. And Missouri will have to punt from its goal line. So let's answer the question. You said Kellen Moore and Colt McCoy survey says you're correct. And, and David, David Green, Green is yeah. the other. Yeah. That's a lot of wins. You think about that. I mean, it's one thing. You don't have many quarterbacks that play from when they're a freshman all four years like Aaron Murray has and David Green did, much less to win consistently that many times. Well, you won a national championship. How many career wins did you have at Michigan? Uh, 17. There you go. <laughs> so, so Kellen Moore, so Kellen Moore has 30 more wins than you, and, and you won a national title. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's. But you had some good quarterbacks in Michigan that you had to beat out. Yeah, there was, you know, Todd Collins, and, and but you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't as highly recruited, so I didn't, I wasn't that guy that when he came in as a freshman, you just kind of walk out of the field, and start playing. But guys come in so much more prepared now from high school to college, and, and they're ready to play as true freshmen. If they have the talent set, why not get them out there? Georgia out of timeout, but should get the ball near midfield. And he almost blocked the punt. Excellent kick, though. Davis backing up, bobbles it around his 25-yard line. And open field tackle made at the 24. How about LaDamian Washington? He's making plays as a receiver. Here he is as a gunner. And that about will end the half. I don't know. Georgia expects to get points now with no timeouts and only 22 seconds after that 56-yard punt. Well, you could not be more impressed with Missouri and their team coming in today. They have been as advertised offensively. Uh, LaDamian Washington is a great example of being an unselfish player and, and contributing on offense, blocking on the perimeter for the, for the touchdown run, playing on special teams. Missouri's got a great thing going right now. Really late getting on the field here. First down for Georgia. Out of timeouts. 22 seconds left and a half. And Murray's pass is pulled in by Conley trying to get out of bounds. Or is he? The clock will stop momentarily as they reset the chains. Only 13 seconds left. But they got 18 
yards on the play. Marshall Morgan's got a good leg. His career long is 56. That was last week against Tennessee. So they can get it to the 38 on this play here. Murray steps up. And it's caught right at the first down marker. We'll see if they stop to measure or not. They won't. That's the end of the half. And Aaron Murray saying, why didn't you have an official timeout to measure? It was awfully close to a first down. Mark Richt is wondering the same thing. Well, if it, obviously, if it was a first down, the clock should have stopped. If there was a question as to whether it was a first down or not, it should have stopped the clock. And Mark Richt has a point about it. And he's hot right now. That's as angry as you'll see Mark Richt get Absolutely. at officials. Absolutely. And, and he's got a point. If there was any question as to whether that was close enough to a first down, they should have stopped the clock. And what would have happened is they would have had an opportunity to throw a Hail Mary with two seconds left on the clock. Needed to get to the 48. It's close enough. I think with five seconds left there, you, you have to, to call the official timeout. Mark Richt is standing by with Tom. Coach, Coach obviously thought that ball should have at least been measured in the top clock. Well, yeah, I thought it was. What do you think? You couldn't see it. I Could couldn't see it? it. No, couldn't see it, so it should have well, been measured, right? It's close enough to measure, in my opinion, yeah. Okay. Offensively, haven't been on the field very much. What adjustments do you need to make defensively to get off the field on third down? It's the usual. Cover your man, put pressure on the on the passers, you know? And then if they run the ball, you got to rally to the ball. That's all there is to it. All right, thanks, Coach. Mark Rick not happy. You can understand why. Down 28 to 10 to Missouri here at the half. Missouri trying to stay unbeaten. Let's go to the studio in Reese. All right, Dave, the Hall of Famers, Lou Holtz, Mark May. This is college football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Here in Athens, ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Missouri trying to stay unbeaten, opening some eyes around college football, leading Georgia 28-10. Georgia without its top three receivers and top two running backs, Brian. So obviously that's impacted yeah. the offense, but the real problem is on defense. Well, they certainly have struggled on defense. I don't think there's a, a panacea, a quick fix for them on defense. I think they're being outplayed, and they're playing a team that's got better athletes on the perimeter. These big wide receivers, Lucas and Green Beckham, are just being physical on the outside, getting blocks, allowing them to get the ball on the perimeter. This is the touchdown run. You see great block by LaDamian Washington, as well as Lucas on the outside, and Georgia missing some tackles. Shaq Wiggins right there missing tackles. It's an attitude on defense for Georgia. And then on the other side, offensively, they're having trouble blocking the edge rusher, rushers. Michael Sam gets a hand here and forces an incomplete pass on a critical third down early in the game. And then Shane Ray, gets by that Artie Lynch and Canarius Gates who aren't on the same page. This ends up in a sack fumble for a touchdown. So it's, it's been both sides and it's not just the injuries, Dave. It's, it's the way that they're playing, the attitude they're playing with on defense. It's really hurting them. Their defense dead last in the SEC in points a lot coming in. Georgia also had a fumble by Brendan Douglas deep in Missouri territory late in the half. It would have made it an 11 point deficit. Georgia will get the ball to start the second half. Trailing by 18. A loss would obviously not rule Georgia out of an SEC title, but would end their national championship hopes getting a second loss. And Green will take a knee and we'll come out to the 25. Time now for our Discover Game Changer. Brought to you by Discover Car. The offense for Missouri, 225 yards, led by a, by a healthy James Franklin. And the defense for Missouri. Maybe that's been the surprise of the day. The defense looks for real. They have a couple of takeaways, including a touchdown by Sam. Well, and the biggest difference for Missouri on defense has been there. They've been able to get pressure on Aaron Murray with just their front four. They haven't had to bring any blitzes or any pressure, which may expose them in the back end. So first down for Georgia on its 25. 
Aaron Murray threw for 182 yards and a touchdown in the first half. They run it up the gut. And Green gets about six on first and ten as we look at our first half stats brought to you by Timberland. Again, Missouri, 91 rushing yards. They lead the SEC in rushing. Penalties were a problem for both teams and turnovers by Georgia. Again, Georgia without Todd Gurley. Second straight game he's missed with a left ankle that he hurt against LSU. Keith Marshall out for the year with an ACL. But J.J. Green is loose. Inside the 40. Inside the 20. And all the way to the 10-yard line. 58-yard run. Great blocking on the inside. You get to the second level, Canarius Gates, and Andrews gets to the second level to get on the linebackers. And then J.J. Green, you get him in the open field, and he's got a little bit of wheels. This is a different approach from Georgia right off the bat in the second half. They're not in two tight ends, two backs. They came out in three wide receivers, and that's opened up the field a little bit on the inside to run. So first and goal at the 10-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. And this time, Green is knocked to the ground at the point of attack by Matt Hoke. Well, you had to expect coming out in the second half after having some time in that locker room, you've got great leadership in Aaron Murray and in their head coach, Mark Rick, that Georgia wasn't going to come out here and be flat in the second half. They're going to give it everything they have. Just one of three in the red zone. Again, that turnover at the end of the first half was costly. It was a fumble by the guy who's got it now. No, no, because it's the quarterback Murray keeping it and then throwing it away. Good ball fake. And then uh, Green, instead of uh, throwing in a jump ball there for Conley, was one-on-one -on -one with Ponder. Elected just to throw it away. Maybe felt some pressure from Sam. They want to throw the slant on the weak side to Conley, but the safety was waiting on it. It was a good decision by Aaron Murray it would have been a bang-bang play it could have been intercepted it brings up a third and ten here and they love to get in this situation Conley who's lined up in the slot in the middle of the field towards the back of the end zone third and goal Murray underneath and it's incomplete Intended for Wooden, Wilson, the linebacker, covering, and Georgia will have to settle for a field goal try. Boy, and that was well played by Wilson. He read the underneath route. They ran Conley off and then brought Wooten underneath, and they were hoping that they could get Wooten the ball and he could make a move on the linebacker and make him miss. That's just too well played by Andrew Wilson. You can see from that previous shot, the end zone look, that both receivers in the end zone for Georgia were double covered. 27-yard try by Marshall Morgan. He made a 29-yarder earlier in the game. And at least Georgia gets points after that 57-yard run by J.J. Green and cuts the Missouri lead to 15 early in the third quarter in Athens. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more info, go to GetSECNetwork.com. And if Missouri can hang on and shake things up in the SEC East with South Carolina right now leading at Arkansas, Florida, trying to stay unbeaten yeah. in conference play, plays LSU later today. Be a wild final month and a half in this division of the SEC the East. It was Texas A&M that surprised people last year coming from the Big 12 and having success. This year it's Missouri. It was two and six in conference last year. Short kickoff, and here's Murphy for the Tigers. And Murphy's past the 20-yard line. Still going across the 35. They finally get to him at the 45-yard line. 43-yard return. Reggie Carter able to track him down. All right, we talked about Murphy being a um, kick returner. Also good there. Here's James Franklin. Take a look. People think that this is a big surprise that Missouri's doing well. Look at the numbers in 2011. 2,800 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards rushing, and 15 rushing touchdowns. In 2012, he was hurt. He had a torn labrum. He had a concussion. He had an MCL. 
and he couldn't produce like he could in 2011. This year he's been fantastic, and then today he's continued it, and so this should not come as a surprise that James Franklin's playing well, and as a result, this offense has been playing well. Here's Hansbro, and he's up near midfield for a pickup of four yards on the play. And I think the thing that that is so extraordinary about James Franklin is he's also a big guy, 230 pounds. When he runs the football, he, he can make an impact. He can deliver a blow. He can get in the end zone. We saw the first touchdown of the game, driving a linebacker into the end zone. So when he has that going, as well as his accuracy throwing the ball, he's hard to stop. Here's Franklin on second down. Swings it, and Murphy able to hang on to it and get the first down. He juggled it initially, then made the catch and picks up the first down. As Franklin continues to move the sticks you're for Missouri. See, yeah, sorry, you're going to see more of this. I mean, when, when it's been so successful getting the ball on the edge, look at the blocking from Jimmy Hunt, the wide receiver, and Doriel Green Beckham. Again, I mean, I can't say enough how impressed I've been with the, with the blocking and the selflessness of these wide receivers on the edge. This drive started around the 45-yard line of Missouri after the longest kick return of the year. Franklin with all day, but everybody covered. So Franklin takes off and heads towards the, the sideline, shoved out by Rameek Wilson. Remember, too, last year, there was a lot of people questioning the toughness of James Franklin. And maybe all of us are learning a lesson this week with the clowny stuff. We just need to stop questioning when guys are hurt and when they're not. Well, because there were people that wondered whether yeah. Franklin was tough enough. Well, this day and age, we don't know because teams don't tell you what the injuries are. So we don't know. And then we start to extrapolate and think we know what the injury is and we don't. And then we start to question people's toughness. And that's a that's a place you don't ever want to go unless you absolutely know what's going on. I've had some of the injuries that James Franklin had, a torn labrum. You, it's an injury. You can't play through that. Concussion, you can't play through that, right? So uh, I think we, we got on James Franklin a year ago, and now I think you need to give him the credit where it's due. And he's a tough football player. Georgia last in the conference in third down defense. Needs to get off the field. Third down and three for Missouri. Franklin steps up. And down he goes. Brought down by Ray Drew. Fourth down. You've got a lead. Do you go or do you punt it and try to pin Georgia deep? We'll see. Take a look at Ray Drew right in the middle. He tried to cut him. And he's just too athletic. Stays up, keeps after it. When you take a five-step drop, you can't cut as an offensive line because that gives the defensive line that has time to get up and make the tackle. If you're going to throw the ball quick, of course you can cut up front because you want to get hands down. It's usually a short throw. Missouri punting and trying to pin Georgia deep. And there's another guy wearing number one. That's not Franklin. That's... Missouri able to get down there and make a play. It was Gibson for the Tigers. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Luganville in Athens. Georgia trailing Missouri 28-13. The Bulldogs back on the field after stopping Missouri and forcing a punt, but they have the ball at their three-yard line. Aaron Murray getting used to some receivers and running backs. Took the field, most of them for the first time last week against Tennessee. His top three wideouts and top two tailbacks all out for today's game. Many of them out for the season. And Douglas lining up five yards deep in the end zone. And he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Stood up by Brothers and Coney Ely. When you think about what Georgia had to replace, too, with Keith Marshall and Todd Gurley, two of the most talented backs in the country, and now you're going to a pair of two true freshmen in Brendan Douglas and J.J. Green. Green has had some moments in this ball game, including a 57-yard run, but you know, Gurley's a first-round draft pick, and Marshall's right there, too. Yeah, you just lose that, that big play opportunity where those guys got past the first line of defense. They could run over a linebacker, but then also run by a defensive back. And they don't make a lot of those guys. Play action. Murray from his end zone. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. He had Douglas, too. 
But he had heat on him. Coney Ely in the backfield, putting pressure on Murray. It's third down and nine. Boy, you always hold your breath as an offensive coordinator when your quarterback's throwing the ball from his own end zone. And with the pressure that Missouri has been able to apply with their front four with Sam and Ely and Brantley and some of these uh, guys on the defensive line, it is not an easy proposition to get a first down inside your own five. Now you're in an obvious passing situation. Third down and nine. There's some movement. So it'll be another offside. The receiver on the near side, Chris Conley, looked like he moved, but was it after encroachment on the defense? It's a great idea by Aaron Murray. False start. 31 on the offense. You're right. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Still third down. Yeah, that was Conley. Because Aaron Murray got the defense offside. You just got, and, and of all the people, right? I mean, the one guy that's played the most at the wide receiver position, and Conley knew it. That was a free five yards. It would have brought up a third and two or three. Now, third and 12. Murray deep in his own end zone and through the hands of the intended receiver, Reggie Davis, incomplete, right at the first down marker. At some point, Aaron Murray, you start getting frustrated if you're not already. But this is this is what we talked about at the very beginning of the game is is being patient, giving these guys an opportunity to make plays. It's a perfect throw from Aaron Murray. Just got to come down with that. He looked down, looked like he looked down to get his foot in bounds. But you jump off sides, Chris Conley, Reggie Davis goes through your hands and this is what you get when you've got so many guys on the sideline hurt. The backup punter, Adam Erickson, a low snap. They've had two punts blocked, return for touchdowns, a short punt here. And it was not touched by Missouri. So it'll be Missouri ball as Murphy had it go over his head. Either got misjudged it, maybe the sun had an impact, but it did not hit him, so it'll be Missouri ball. Right, Murphy was coming up and he just slipped, just lost his lost his footing. And that but he, and, a, and a good job. He was lucky the ball bounced away from him. If yeah. it would have bounced back and hit him, then Georgia was in position to recover it. Well, Missouri takes over in Georgia territory, leading by 15. Still a lot of time left. Franklin. And in the traffic, broken up. What a hit at the 25-yard line. Josh Harvey Clemens, a six-foot, five-inch safety on the six-foot, five-inch receiver, Marcus Lucas. And a clean hit, apparently. Wow. Great throw there, but take a look at this hit right here. Does he get in the chest? That's a great hit. I was looking at the official in the very back. The back judge right here and he went to reach for his flag and couldn't get it out of his pocket and then he changed his mind it looked like did he lead with the crown of the helmet josie up the middle spun down at the 37 yard line he definitely didn't he hit him below the shoulders but did he lead with the crown no and face mask you gotta hit him, you hit him with the face mask keep your head up and hit him with the face mask and that's a clean hit so a big third down again on defense for georgia and they get off the field. Get Aaron Murray back out there. Missouri scored 21 second quarter points, including a touchdown on defense. Here's Franklin. Not in sync with his receiver, LaDamian Washington. It's fourth down. Well, they punted in this situation on the last possession. Looks like they'll do the same. Worked out pretty well. They pinned yeah. George inside the five. And Christian Brinzer will try to do it again here. That was a missed opportunity there with James Franklin. That, that ball, just trying to throw the back shoulder, and he just threw it in the dirt. That's twice now Missouri on in this half. Having possession in Georgia territory and squandering opportunities to add to their lead. McGowan is the deep man. And this will hit at the five and go to the end zone. George is at poor field position all day, but the Bulldogs will be on their 20 when we come back. Watch college football live all season long and watch it.
ESPN College Football, brought to you by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado and new Jockey Sport underwear. Get real odor control cooling and quick drying with Jockey Sport. With Brian Gracie, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash, here in Athens, an important game in the SEC East. Missouri trying to stay undefeated. Leading Georgia 28-13. The Bulldogs starting on their 20. And Green powers to the 23-yard line. Tom, you've been keeping an eye on Aaron Murray and his interaction with his teammates. What are you seeing? Well, Aaron's so used to having so much success and things going smoothly, and they're not right now. A little frustration setting in with his body language. Not necessarily in a negative way, but he knows they're capable of better what the, than what they're pulling off right now. I think they need to settle down, be patient. I like the first down run call. Play pitch and catch. Let's get some early confidence throws, some underneath throws, just so they can start moving the chains. He had a drop on... The last series that would have been a first down for Georgia when they're backed up in their own territory. Second down and seven after the three yard run. And Murray letting it go. One on one coverage downfield and the pass under throne. John Gibson had coverage on Reggie Davis. And it's third and seven. And I think to add to Tom's uh, Tom's analysis. This Aaron Murray looks a little shaken to me quite honestly. That's a ball that you got to put out there. Reggie Davis is one of the faster guys. You got to put that ball out there four yards from the sideline and let your receiver go up and get it. And I think the rush, the pass rush from Michael Sam and Ely is starting to have its effect on Aaron Murray in the second half. He's 0 for 5 passing in the second half. Did have that drop. Chase from behind here. Gets rid of it to Green. Trying to spin away. Great second effort. He gets the first down to the 32-yard line. On third down and seven, they get nine. When things aren't going well, you got to find somebody that will make a play. This was well defended and almost came up short, but a great move from Green to spin it back around Wilson gets them a first down, which is big. Green at only 180 pounds, showing some strength that time. Coaches told us, and it's kind of a cliche term, but he's a football player, not fast, not the strongest guy in the world, but he just makes plays. Four wide receivers set. Six guys in the box, and Aaron Murray's going to throw it. And another high throw. Wow, way over the head of Tibbs. And, it, and this get is away from him. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, David. Just he's a little bit off, and sometimes, yes, you can get frustrated. You can try to force things. Will you couple on top of that that he's been getting hit by this Missouri defensive line? And I think you're starting to see the effect on Aaron Murray. That was a pretty clear indication there that Missouri's going to force Aaron Murray to beat them throwing the football. They don't feel like they can pitch and catch well enough to move the ball. Go to the air here on second and ten. And a short throw to Green. Gets a block from Conley. And Green is tackled at the 40-yard line. Eight-yard pickup. It'll bring up third down and short. And in this situation, if I'm Aaron Murray, I am continuing to use my snap count. You've done it twice. One time you got a cheap first down, the other time Conley jumped off. But in any of these third and short situations, use your snap count. Did it right there, yep. and they didn't jump. Give, give Missouri credit. Now he's going to look to the sideline and get a play. Pass play on third and two. And Murray going deep. Incomplete. A flag thrown, though. It was intended for Towns. It appeared underthrown again. But Ian Simon wasn't looking for the ball. Well, again, the ball is underthrown. And this time, at least you fight back to the ball. That's what you teach the wide receiver. Well done by Towns. And if Simon doesn't turn around, they call that every time. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So if, as a quarterback, you're Aaron Murray here, you're struggling, you're, you're frustrating. How do you shake it off? I mean, you're a human being, you're dealing with this. It's not going to change over the course of this game. But you got two guys who are out for the season. You're going to get Michael Bennett back eventually, but keep taking he's your out shot. for today. Keep taking your shot. I like that he's continuing to trust these receivers and throwing the ball down the field. You just got to keep taking your shots, and hopefully it'll, it'll work out. Here's a run. Douglas all met in the hole and drilled at the 42-yard line. Gain of a couple. 
Now, Aaron Murray really appears to be aiming the football. When you see a guy aiming the football, he's very delicate with his release instead of throwing with an authoritative, powerful delivery. I think that's why the ball's been underthrown. He hasn't been driving off his back foot. And again, Greece, I think it's a lot of tentativeness right now from Aaron Murray. It's hard to step into your throw when you got Michael Sam in your lap every time you try to. No doubt throw about it. that. But there's been some throws where there hasn't been pressure. He's either underthrown or overthrown a receiver. Go with two backs here. Inside the 40 yard line is Douglas to the 39. Matt Hoke on the tackle. You surprised we're not seeing more of, of J. Rome, more two tight end formation? They only have really two healthy scholarship guys at that position. Well, we've seen it. We've seen it sprinkled in it throughout uh, this game. I think Rome is a guy that I expected to be featured a little bit more in this game because I think he's one of the better playmakers outside of Conley on, on the roster that's still healthy. Uh, but we just haven't, we haven't seen it from him. Another third down, third and five. Your field goal kicker has the leg to make it from here, Marshall Morgan. Murray's pass off the mark, intended for Wooten. It was catchable, but it was behind him. It's fourth down. Do you go for it? Do you try to kick a field goal here? What would you do if you're Mark Ray? You, I think you got to. I think you got to go for it here. Um, again, that ball thrown behind. Rontavious Wooten. It was a very easy conversion, and Aaron Murray just threw it behind him. So fourth down and five. Down 15. Georgia two of eight on third down, but on the year pretty good on fourth down. 75% conversion rate. Murray with time, and the pass caught by Conley. Forward progress to the 33 for a first down. Great hands from Chris Conley. This was well defensed. But when he got his hands out and caught that ball, if he tried to catch it in his body, it would have been knocked down. Get your hands out, secure that ball, first down. And now you go up tempo if you're Georgia. Try to get some momentum. Murray really likes to work in shotgun. He will here on first down, a 10 play of the drive. Murray, tons of time. Wide open is the tight end Lynch for a first down inside the 15. A 21 yard pass play. Lynch goes right around Brothers, number 10, the linebacker. He doesn't get a hand on him, and as soon as that happens, Aaron Murray loves to throw the ball in the seam to Lynch and Rome. And if you don't get a jam on them, they're going to be open. They've been in the red zone, though, four times, just one touchdown. Had a turnover here, had to settle for a field goal a couple of times. Again over the middle and nearly picked off in the redirection. There's Jay Rome getting a rep, but it went right through his hands. Yeah, and Jay Rome, he's got to make this play. This is a tough, you get your eyes around as a, as a tight end, and that ball is already on you, but you got to make this play. I'd go back to that same formation because Rome was open by alignment. There was nobody lined Outside, up over top defense, of it. Number 56. Going to be his five yards. Replay first down. Another offside penalty. That's on Shane Ray. It's a handful by Missouri. Offside penalties. That's big because it brings up now first and five. Ball at the seven-yard line. A lot of two back here with Green as the tailback. Missouri is stemming their defensive front to stop the run, and Aaron Murray's looking at the sideline for a check. Murray going to the end zone for Wooten. He's got it. Touchdown, Georgia. Wooten had the big touchdown against Tennessee at the end of regulation. Definitely got a foot down. He maintained possession and a huge score for Georgia. That was a great audible from Aaron Murray. Missouri went into a bare front to stop the run, and they audible to the pass, and it was executed perfectly. So an eight-point game now with Morgan tacking on the extra point. The second touchdown pass today for Murray.
veteran quarterback makes a play for his team. You see right here, Missouri comes up in a bare front. They want to stop the run. He audibles to a pass. And then once you get there, you got to execute it. Freeze it right there, guys. He's supposed to come out, and this ball's supposed to be on a line. Instead, he throws it over the top because he sees the corner come underneath. And if he were thrown it on a line, it might have been intercepted. Throws it with the perfect amount of touch. That's just great adjustment by Aaron Murray, knowing the defense, calling the right play, and then executing as he sees the defender. How about Wooden, fifth-year senior? Wasn't uh, a guy that was very productive over the course of his career, but called upon the last two games because of all the injuries at that position, including two guys out for the year, Malcolm Mitchell and Justin Scott Wesley, and Wooden stepping up in a big way. Missouri will have the ball on the 25. Here's Reese. Dave, biggest Missouri fans in the world right now, South Carolina. They're taking care of their own business at Arkansas. Connor Shaw is having himself a day. 45-yard touchdown pass to Demir Bird. Shaw's got three of those babies in over 200 yards. 31-7. Yep, yep. Hit ball, coach. Winning, winning big. Yep. <laughs> and obviously with uh, South Carolina that hangs on there, still in the thick of things in the SEC East, along with these two teams in Florida. And Missouri faced with adversity here late in the third on the road, leading by eight. We'll see how their veteran quarterback, James Franklin, handles it as the Tigers try to stay unbeaten and go to 6-0 and 2-0 and in conference play. One of only two SEC teams left that are unbeaten overall. Alabama's the other. From the 25, Franklin stands and throws. An immediate tackle on Washington by Shaq Wiggins, a gain of about four. But well, you can feel the energy in the stadium right now. This Georgia sideline working in conjunction with this Georgia crowd. A little bit flat in the third quarter with a level of frustration, making it awfully difficult for Missouri now on offense. It's a defining moment for the Tigers here on the road. 15 straight wins for Georgia here. Longest active streak in the conference. Little option with Franklin. He'll take a great fake and ran into a teammate, but appeared to get the first down. Herrera on the tackle. Green Beckham was out there blocking, and Franklin ran into him. This is the element that they didn't have a year ago without a healthy James Franklin, but you see he gets out on the edge, and Marlo Herrera takes the back, and there's nobody left for James Franklin. That's 230 pounds coming at some of these defensive backs. Not easy to get down. Rush for almost a thousand yards two years ago, just over a hundred yards last year because of the injury problems. Here's Murphy, and he's grabbed at the waist by Ramique Wilson and pulled down after a two yard pickup. Wilson had 10 tackles in his career prior to this year going into this game. He's the leading tackler of the conference. No Alec Ogletree, Jarvis Jones gone, John Jenkins, Rambo. Yep, double figure numbers of guys that were on the defense last year for Georgia now in the NFL. And offense hoping that their D can get the ball back for him. Two minutes to go in the third. Second down and eight for Missouri. Pressure up the middle. Down goes Franklin for a sack. It's Ray Drew back at the 27. If it wasn't Drew, it would have been Conley and Bailey. They're just coming up the middle here, and now they run a twist on the inside, and Bailey comes scot-free. That's what flushed Franklin, and then Drew was there as well. And now, all of a sudden, this defense is starting to come alive and play with a little bit of passion that Todd Grantham wants them to. A screen pass on third down and 19. And a big hit by Swan on the back. Murphy forcing a punt with a minute to go in the third quarter. And it's amazing momentum and energy and passion. That's why we talk about it so much in college football because you play better when you're playing with passion. And that time, Damian Swan, who's been much maligned, comes up and makes a big stop. Rinzer gets it away. True freshman Reggie Davis on the 25. He's loose at the 30. And up to the 42. Here's Reese in the studio. 
Dave, here's what Reggie Davis was trying to do, exactly what DeJay Johnson does for Texas. In a 23-13 game, DeJay is gone. 85 yards, and Hookham's up 29-13 on OU. It's on ABC. The surprise of the day in wow. college football. Well, the, the surprise is that OU's only scored 13 points. I mean, that Texas defense couldn't stop anybody on the ground. And Some look at this score and say a surprise, but I think if you've been watching the game, you see how good Missouri is in Georgia without some of its key players on offense, but the defense prior to that stop, especially in the first half, really struggled. Final 30 seconds of the third. Here's Murray. Gets rid of it with Sam bearing down. And Douglas almost to a first down. Lewis on the tackle. Great job of buying time by Aaron Murray. Now those are the things that don't show up in a stat sheet. That goes from being a sack and a second and 15 to a second and one just because he made an athletic play. Murray now at 243 yards passing. They'll run it here on second and one. And a huge hole for Douglas. Inside the 40, down to the 37 for 12 yards. As we go to the fourth quarter, momentum clearly in favor of Georgia, trailing by eight to Missouri in a huge SEC East matchup. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. On the 84th anniversary of the first game played here at Sanford Stadium, they have come alive here in Athens thanks to a defense which held Missouri to only 35 yards, no points in that third quarter. And the offense starting to get in sync. A first down at the 37 of Missouri, trailing by eight. First scoreless quarter for Missouri all season. They put up 51 points last week on Vanderbilt. First down for Georgia, and they'll run it. And another hole for Douglas inside the 30. Brought down by Ruiz. And after a gain of about eight on the play. Well, and Georgia has made a change philosophically in this second half on how they want to run the ball. They came out in the first half with two tight ends, a fullback, and tried to run it between the tackles. Now you see they're in four wide sets to run the football, and it's opened up the lanes on the inside. And only seven in the box for Missouri. So they'll run it. Douglas got tripped up, kept his balance for a moment, and... Appears to be very close to a first down. But that was it was counterintuitive for Mike Bobo to come out and approach it that way because you lose so many guys on the perimeter wide receivers. You don't want to come out in a three or four wide receiver set. You got to have bodies out there that can actually line up. But he's found that that's the best way for them to run the ball. Again, no Todd Gurley out again today with an ankle problem. Keith Marshall out for the season. So they have to rely on a pair of true freshmen and J.J. Green and Brendan Douglas, one of their receivers who's getting a lot of action today is a true freshman, Reggie Davis. As they measure here to see whether Douglas got the first down, he's just short. So third down in inches at the 28-yard line. This is time for their big fullback, Quavon Hicks, 260 pounds, short yardage, has his name written all over it. There he is. Outstanding blocker, special teams player, if that face mask, I'd give it to him on short yards, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he's involved one way or the other. He's either he's blowing somebody up in the hole as a fullback or he's getting the touch. Remember they told us yesterday, though, he's not great when it yeah. comes to, to handling the football. Doesn't give him a great pocket for the quarterback to stick it in there. When you come out there and your job is to blow people up and you're a physical guy, it's hard to sometimes revert back to being a ball carrier. Third down in inches. And here is the big guy. Oh, and they get him right at the line of scrimmage. How about Wilson? Giving up about 20 pounds to Quavon Hicks. Close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Nope, they're going to just say that he definitely got it. Four progress gives him the first down. You said great hit by Andrew Wilson. He's the big hitter. That's what he's known for. 
on this Missouri defense from that Mike linebacker spot. He didn't get it by much. All this spread offense and throwing the ball and perimeter, all of that, it's always nice to come back and see a big fullback take on a big Mike linebacker and throw yardage. And Hicks won that battle, so a fresh set of downs for Georgia. Now Murray back to the air, downfield, deflected, incomplete. It first was nearly picked off by Simon, then almost caught by Wooten. And you had Sam getting pressure backside on Murray. Well, that was an aggressive throw. Look at that tight window. But that ball was thrown with an opportunity for Wooten to get it. It did look like it was tipped just barely by Simon underneath. Remember, Missouri with 11 interceptions coming into this game tied for most in the country. They were close to getting number 12 there. Dangerous throw by Murray. Another huge running lane as Douglas bounces off the tackler, has another first down inside the 15. They got it going now with the rush game. 13 more yards. Great job by Dallas Lee, number 64 right there, gets the block on the Mike linebacker. And again, the lane is open on the inside because they're staying in this four wide receiver set, forcing Missouri to play defenders on the outside, and then they're getting their offensive line up to the second level on the linebackers, and there's nobody left. From the 13-yard line, first and 10. Douglas down to the 10. Brothers made the stop, so a pickup of three. Douglas now at 70 yards rushing. Green has 84 for Georgia. And, and Missouri needs to make the adjustment to bring another linebacker back inside the box because they're getting gashed on the inside. They, they have to stop that running game and force Aaron Murray and these young wide receivers to make the play on the outside. 113 yards on the ground this half for Georgia after 48 in the first half. They did get 57 on one play. J.J. Green run to start the quarter. Play action, roll out. Murray going end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Chris Conley. And Georgia will go for the tie. Two-point conversion attempt coming up. You saw Gurley looking on. The injured running back for the Bulldogs. That was a heck of a throw from Aaron Murray. Went quickly backside to his third read on a naked. Very impressive and put it right on common for the score. Murray rolling out again. And it's dropped. Conley couldn't hang on. No conversion, and Missouri stays in front by two. He has brought him back, down 18. They put it all on the back of Aaron Murray right here. Goes backside quick to Chris Conley in a two-point game. It's college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotel. Here at Georgia, it's a two-point game. Missouri still on top. Aaron Murray with a touchdown pass and then a drop by the guy that caught the touchdown, Chris Conley, in the end zone on a two-point conversion attempt. A look at Georgia, what it's done in the second half. On defense, just 35 yards allowed and no points. Boy, it looked at halftime like Missouri was unstoppable on offense. He'll take a seat. It'll come out to the 25. Let's check him with Reese. Dave, the eyes of Texas have brought perhaps a winning effort in the Red River rivalry. Case McCoy's been terrific. Mike Davis beats man coverage in 36-13. And the Longhorns are about to get the ball back. Does this save Matt Brown? Beating Oklahoma. It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely advertised as Mac's last stand. And... I think uh, he's got a spirited effort from the Longhorns, but I don't know that it saves his job. Huh? The pitch to Josie. Trying to bounce it outside. Wrapped up. No gain on the play. 
Drew getting off a block to make a play. The biggest difference to me, Dave, in the second half with Georgia's defense has been their front four. They are getting in the backfield. They're putting pressure on James Franklin. They are putting pressure in the running game. And right now the offensive line from Missouri is not able to match the intensity of Ray Drew and Garrison Smith. Well, that front three playing well for Georgia. Franklin with a swing pass to Josie. And the hole closes at the 25-yard line. There was running room initially, but then Shaq Wiggins made the stop. Again, another play that doesn't gain much of anything. Great job for Shaq Wiggins. We talked about him getting blocked and missing a tackle in the first half. This time he ups the energy level, gets around Doriel Green Beckham, and makes a big play. And Georgia trying to call timeout. They have to burn one here. That'll lead the Bulldogs with two. Big third down and nine coming up for James Franklin of the Missouri offense. You guys got to Now. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors. Find your own lane at MitsubishiCars.com. An intensity you can taste between and beyond the hedges. Here at Sanford Stadium. Missouri's longest play this half is nine yards. They have to get nine here on third down. And Franklin has a wide open LaDamian Washington in the middle of the field. That worked in the first half. Not really here since intermission. But they get 15 that time. Well, they tried to get some pressure with the front four. They blocked it up perfectly. And Damian Washington, when he gets over the middle of the field, he's such a big target at 6'4". And he's got such good hands. Hard to defend. Franklin in trouble. Just throws it away. They got beyond the line of scrimmage, and he was outside the tackle box. So no grounding. Took a hit that time as he was being chased by Jordan Jenkins. Smart play, smart play. We've got two quarterbacks, two seniors in this game. Very smart. They operate at a high level mentally. They don't make a whole lot of mistakes in critical situations. As this game goes on in the fourth quarter, both of these guys are going to show you how good they are in operating their offense. Franklin is thrown for 170 yards and a touchdown. Henry Josie is the tailback in the game. They've been rotating Josie Murphy and Hansbrook. There's a design run for Franklin. Trying to get outside, instead just heads for the sideline. Only about a three or four yard gain there. Looked like there was running room down the middle of the field. The design here, you get the back out, which takes the linebacker, and there's nobody left for James Franklin. You're right, it looked like there was a hole in the middle of the field there. He's coming to the sideline here for third down. Well, if he was injured on the play, or if there is some trickery going on here. He needs to take a timeout. He took a hit when he threw that ball away, and then they came back and he ran. Wonder if he maybe tweaked that's something when he got hit. Maybe that's why he headed for the sideline instead of heading, cutting right and heading to the middle of the field and trying to get what appeared to be first down yardage. All set. James Franklin has gone to the locker room. Redshirt freshman quarterback Matty Mock will replace him as it appeared he got injured on this play, either on the hit or on the... Uh, it comes down his right shoulder there, yeah. That's, in that situation, as quarterback, that's your worst nightmare. It's coming down to your right shoulder. And that's, a, that's an awful sight for the Missouri faithful. Saw too much of that last year. So here's Mock, who's thrown three passes this year, and he goes out there on the road. His first play is a must pick up. Third down and six. They go out of an empty set here. Still leading Georgia by two, but they have not scored this half. They might let Mock use his legs to try to convert this first down. He's more athletic and a little quicker than Franklin. Right on the money. Mock. Slips one tackle, and it's going to be close at the 49-yard line. Rameek Wilson on the stop. We'll see where they spot the ball. Herrera had a chance to get him and make sure that it wasn't even close to a first down, but he missed the tackle. The game is just inside Georgia territory. Yeah, and that's, that's a safe call. You know, you got a new quarterback. Don't let him throw the ball. Don't have to read any coverage. He's athletic. Just pull the guard. 
and let him try to fight his way for a first down. He needed to get almost to the 49. That'll be close. They're going to measure. Let's bring in the national recruiting coordinator for ESPN, Tom Luganville, to tell us about Matty Mock. No, Matty Mock was a guy that statistically was off the charts in high school, but he was on the shorter end of the spectrum in terms of ideal measurables, about 5'11 and a half, a lightning quick release, a release that you can't coach. And everybody in college coaching wants that quarterback that can get the ball out of his hands quickly. Now, this is a player, keep in mind, that beat out Corbin Bergstresser, who was the backup last year to James Franklin. And on an injury note, guys, James Franklin in the locker room right now with a right shoulder strain. They're evaluating him currently. He injured that shoulder in the Georgia game last year after missing the spring of 2012 with a shoulder injury. Mock's going to hand it off here to Josie, who's down to the 40-yard line. Close to another first down. Gain of nine on the play. Well, they opened up the quarterback competition in the spring, Missouri did, and it was a heated competition. And that's where Matty Mock beat out Bergstresser, where they actually opened it up with Franklin as well. So it's not like Matty Mock hasn't been in competitive situations, but this is his first time getting real game action and couldn't be in a more pressure-packed situation. Second down in a yard. Again, out of an empty set. But for third down play, where he picked up six yards on the run. This could be a double pass. It will be Sasser looking downfield. Into the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Well, Damian Washington with a huge grab. Bud Sasser, the third Missouri player to throw a pass today. A 40-yard <laughs> touchdown pass. When you have guys as big on the outside as Missouri does, you're remiss if you don't throw it up at least five or six times and see if they can make a play. And LaDamian Washington's one of the most competitive players on this team. Give him a chance to go up and fight Damian Swan for the ball. Comes up with a huge play for Missouri. And a chance to push it to a two-possession game with the extra point. Remember, Georgia went for two and failed. Although it should have been caught, it was a drop by Conley. And this, and this is why a lot of teams don't go for two so early in the fourth quarter. 12 minutes left, kick the, kick the extra point. How about the gutsy call by first-year offensive coordinator Josh Henson with a backup quarterback to, to do a double pass there. The extra point is wide left. Oh, Baggett missed it to the left, and it's still an eight-point game. Wow. Didn't look like the snap or the hold were bad, just a bad kick. But Matty Mock, you don't want him to throw the ball coming in cold. Let Bud Sasser throw it. And he just throws it up as far as he can. High, let Washington go up and get it. And he beats Shaq Wiggins for the touchdown. Discover touchdown pass that a mixed, a missed extra point. Just a shank by the place kicker, Andrew Baggett. So it remains a one-possession game. A touchdown and a two-point conversion with tie for Georgia. And their offense has been very good here in the second half. And Baggett will kick off. Leads the country in touchbacks. J.J. Green, the deep man. And it will come out to the 25. A lot of teams like to take a chance with the trick play in the red zone fridge for the 40-yard line in. Take a look. Running here is just going to throw it, make sure it's behind the line of scrimmage. And then take a look here. When he goes to throw the ball, he's in good position. But where's the safety over the top? He's expecting to have some help, but that's Corey Moore. That's not him because he's just jogging around in no man's land. This is this is what's been so frustrating for Georgia defensively in the secondary is you got guys that, that are getting beat one-on-one, -on -one, but you also have guys that are just not understanding where they need to be. Then in the end zone, he had 5'10", a corner against 6'4", receiver. Murray in trouble, had to dump it off, trying to hit Green. Marcus Golden was right in Murray's face, and he sensed pressure and released the pass, second and 10. Marcus Golden beat him with his first step. I mean, those are the kinds of first step we see from guys like Clowney, and when you have a linebacker that you convert to a defensive end, you're hoping that he's got a quick first step and that he can build the power to rush the quarterback, and Marcus Golden has certainly proved he can do that. There's Murray on second and ten, and he'll keep it. 
And he gets hit at the 30-yard line, a gain of a handful. Coney Ely with the stick, so big third down for Aaron Murray, who has played well today, 253 passing yards, three touchdowns. He is now too shy of tying Danny Werfel's SEC record for passing scores. Well, he's been he's been gritty today, and, and another, again, another big third down. Who do you trust? Who's the guy you trust with the, with the situation? Artie Lynch, top in the slot. Murray in trouble and sacked by Golden. Golden beat the right tackle, Colton Houston. Murray stepped right into him, and it's fourth down. Colton Houston has gotten beat on the last two plays, and it's that first step. Look at that look. He just comes in with power, and Houston has to respect the speed up the field. No chance for Aaron Murray. When you combine Golden with Michael Sam, Coney Ely, Shane Ray, who had a sack fumble for a touchdown, people need to understand that Missouri can rush the quarterback. So a three and out by Georgia. The backup punter, Adam Erickson, is out there. Colin Barber battled a concussion that he suffered last week. Now we got to stop at your play. Timeout, Georgia. That's the second, second timeout, timeout that Georgia's taken today second on special half. teams, and the second timeout they've had to burn here in the second half. They may come back to haunt them late. Let's go to the studio and check in with Reese. Dave, not much has gone right for Oklahoma against Texas, but on a third down, a down that Texas has owned today, Geno Grissom makes a play, intercepting the screen attempt from Case McCoy. He takes it back 54 yards for the touchdown. Oklahoma hanging in on ABC, down two scores and two two-point conversions. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Another timeout burned by Georgia on special team. Marcus Murphy, the deep man, as Erickson will punt here on fourth and ten. And the fair catch made at the 36-yard line. Only a 38-yard punt. So Missouri led at halftime 28-10. And then Georgia outscored Missouri 10-zip in the third, giving up just 35 yards in the quarter. Missouri, the lead was cut to two, and then James Franklin was injured. His replacement comes in, Matty Mock, and throws it behind the line of scrimmage to Bud Sasser, who throws a bomb to LaDamian Washington. Then they miss the extra point. So it's a one possession game with eight to play in the fourth. First down for Missouri at its 36 yard line. Through Georgia defensively, you've got to force Matty Mark to beat you with his arm. So sell out to stop the run. And they are eight guys in the box. Here's Josie, off right tackle. Into a wall of Georgia defenders. Just a two-yard pickup. Josh Harvey Clemens, big safety, sticking his face in there, making the hit. We thought coming into this game, how is Georgia offensively going to survive all the injuries they had? Now the question in the fourth quarter, when it's most important, how will Missouri deal with the injury to their most important player, their quarterback? Remember, E.J. Gaines, too, their best corner, was hurt earlier in the ball game. Marcus Murphy in the backfield with Mock for second and eight. And Mock will swing it here. And a great stick by Harvey Clemens on Darius White. A loss on the play around the 33-yard line. There's a penalty marker down, though. I think uh, so. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense, number 52. 15-yard penalty from previous spot, automatic first down. A horrendous penalty on Amarlo Herrera. You had him stopped, you had a negative play. He just came in and hit. That's hit. just, that's, that's dumb. Five steps and then you hit the quarterback. Yeah. And he didn't even hit him hard, but you don't have to hit him hard when you take three steps to the quarterback and... I said five. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly it was roughing the passer, and so instead of being backed up, Third and long, it's first down in Georgia territory. Georgia's going to continue to pressure Matty Mock. You see Josh Harvey Clemens. Oops, sorry, guys. He's on the outside. Josh Harvey Clemens 
is coming off the edge, trying to bait, but that's where they want to bring the pressure from. Murphy on the carry, and doesn't get much. Able to stretch forward to get an additional yard, about three or four on the carry. Clock at six and a half in counting. Again, just one timeout for Georgia. Had to burn two here this half. But I think Georgia's going to continue to sell out to stop the run. And the question will be, can Matty Mock get the ball to some of the playmakers on the outside? We haven't called Doriel Green Beckham's name in a while. Washington caught the ball from Sasser. And all swing passes from Mock since he entered the game. Second down and six here. Play clock at seven. Mock trying to change the play. They have to use a timeout here. Mock unsure what to do in the play clock at two, and so Missouri will take a timeout. So that leaves the Tigers with just one timeout. 5.59 on the clock. Now coming up later on ESPN, about 90 minutes from now, it'll be Penn State and Michigan. by Eastern, followed by Texas A&M and Ole Miss College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Michigan, Penn State at 5, A&M, Ole Miss at 8.30. Aaron Murray certainly making a case to be in the Heisman discussion, along with Johnny Mantell, who you'll see later today on ESPN. Well, he's if he wants to be in that discussion, he needs his defense to get a stop and get him the ball back. Everybody knows the circumstances that have been dealt to Aaron Murray, and it's, it's, it's again, as we said, I think it's the biggest challenge in his career at Georgia. How does he handle losing three out of his top four wide receivers and two running backs? I think today it's been up and down, but all, all in all, he needs one more shot. He's got to hope Aaron Murray does. His defense can get a stop to give him the ball back with a score still 34-26. Not the throw. Looking for the short pass. It's a dangerous throw, and it's caught, and will actually lose yardage. Josie, a two-yard setback as Wilson had a beat on him. He had that covered. And this is why you don't want your young quarterback throwing the ball. He just throws it blindly out there. And Rameek Wilson, if he was looking, could have intercepted this and run it back for a touchdown. He was right on top of Posey. Those are the only passes we've seen Mott throw, but he's going to have to sling it downfield here with third down and eight. Well, you know you're going to get man-to-man -man coverage again, and they're going to try to get pressure. They're going to try to get Leonard Floyd in the backfield. He's the defensive end pass rusher at the top of the screen. Mock, it's a screen. Hands throw. Will not get the first down. Stacked up at the 40-yard line. It'll be fourth down and about three. You got your backup quarterback. Do you risk keeping your offense out there and going for it on fourth down, or, or do you punt, try to pin him deep? It's too long for a field goal try. Baggett's career long is 46. Well, first thing I'm going to do is run the clock all the way down, and then I'm going to make my decision. So you're going to waste your final time out here? Oh, no, I'd have my punt team out there, but I would burn every little bit of the clock, and then I'd punt it down there inside the five. Maybe they'll just take the delay of game here, not use the timeout, take the delay of the five yep. yards, and then put Brinzer out there. He's done a pretty good job today. So they'll take the delay a game penalty. Let's check in with Tom down on the field. Well, Matty Mock clearly a bit rattled there, particularly at the line of scrimmage, trying to diagnose what was taking place, get the play called. Crowd was getting really, really loud. He's spending too much time looking to the sideline and seeing his inexperience. The key here for Missouri, if you're Missouri right now, you have got to get this on a long field for your defense because Georgia has not looked good the last two series. Field position is going to be Matty Mock and Missouri's best friend right now. Can Brinzer get it done? A couple times he's got it inside the 20. And this was not great. They're caught at the 19-yard line. There is a penalty marker down on the far side at the line of scrimmage. That's not at all what the Missouri coaches had in mind when they took that delay game penalty. Now the question is, will they get another shot at it? The re-kick looks like. Should have been a penalty on Georgia. So had they not taken the delay, it'd be first down. <laughs> They're fourth back to fourth and three. Illegal shift on the kicking team, okay, number one. 
Five-yard penalty will be added for the end of the kick. First down. So Tom talked about field position being Missouri's best friend. Well, they just blew it. They a bad punt, and then you get a penalty, so Georgia's going to have the ball around its 24-yard line. Aaron Murray's got 425 to work with. One timeout. Down eight. The biggest issue for Aaron Murray that he has to have in the back of his mind right now is my two tackles, Canarius Gates and Colton Houston, who they now have taken out of the game and put John Theus in. They have struggled mightily blocking the pass rush from these defensive ends. I have to get the ball out of my hand quickly. Can the senior Heisman candidate do it again for Georgia against a ranked team? Murray. Oh, he throws a horrible interception to Ponder. The first pick of the day thrown by Murray, and he's shaken up on the play as well. The cumulative effect of the hits on the quarterback, we hear about it all the time. Aaron Murray flushed out of the pocket and threw the ball before he was comfortable. He's trying to get the ball on the outside and ponder. This ball should come underneath to Artie Lynch. That's just a high low there, and that's a bad read, and I think when you get hit so many times, you have to respect that. And Whoa, that, that was three steps. Could that have been roughing the passer on, no. on that play there? No. First well, we, interception we, in 99 attempts thrown by Aaron Murray. But we talked about these two quarterbacks, Franklin and Aaron Murray, in the fourth quarter, both veteran guys. Franklin's out, and a big mistake by Aaron Murray. If you're Mizzou, all you want to do is get three points on the board. And Mock, they read the pitch. And so Mock has to run it himself. And again, just one timeout for Georgia, so they got to let the clock run here. Next snap will come with about three and a half remaining. Missouri ball, second down and long, leading Georgia by eight, trying to hand the Bulldogs their second loss. Missouri trying to go to 6-0 and and shake things up in the SEC East. And you wonder, for Aaron Murray, if he... All these plays that you've been trying to make all day, and then you try to force one in the last drive with the game on the line. He knows that he should have dropped it off to the underneath coverage, but can't take that back. Mock to the air on second and long. A deep pass here, and it's Green Beckham coming back to the ball and making the catch. You asked about where he was, and they found him there with the smaller corners. Shaq Wiggins trying to defend the six foot five inch receiver, a 20 yard gain. And the thing is, you don't have to throw a perfect ball. Just throw it out there. If it's if it's anywhere in the area, these guys, Washington and Green Beckham, are going to get up with their physical body and make a play on it. That's as good an offense as you could possibly have. And again, just one time out. Georgia can't stop that clock. Got to let it run. Missouri with the field goal would. Push it to a two-possession game. Yeah, you want to run it three times in a row right here and burn the clock. And Mock will. Got to stay in bounds. But he stepped out inside the 10. Pretty good run, though. Got five yards. But the clock stops at 2.51. That's a poor mistake there by Mock, though. Just got to take a seat once well, you uh, get outside there. I think he was trying to get down. He got hit, and he just kind of went, went out of bounds. Here's James Franklin. Oh, boy. Again, the injured shoulder. And what does this mean going forward? Missouri hangs on and wins this game. How long have you lost your quarterback? We saw Connor Shaw get hurt a few weeks ago. He came right back and played, so we don't want to speculate on the length of the injury, but obviously done for today. Well, you hope that, uh, that it's not, not too lengthy. Play clock at two. Inside the five, and touchdown, Josie. A seven-yard touchdown run, and Missouri leads it by two scores just outside two minutes remaining. Great blocking on the left side by Justin Britt, Max Copeland, and then Rameek Wilson, 51, the linebacker, just runs around it, and great vision from Josie to dive into the end zone. And Murray upset with himself, the interception that leads to... Likely the game-winning touchdown for Missouri. Baggett just missed an extra point. This one close, but able to sneak it through the left upright. Well, we talked about this Missouri offense so much coming in, but really today the story has been the defense and getting after Aaron Murray. Michael Sam came in, 
made a play early in the game on a big third down, got his hand on Aaron Murray's arm, which forced the incompletion. Shane Ray just beat the left tackle and tight end. Miscommunication led to a huge sack fumble, a momentum changer for a touchdown early in the game. And then in the second half, they've continued, and Marcus Golden took a turn. You know, these these Georgia has played four offensive tackles. They've, they've played John Theus, they've played Colton Houston, Canarius Gates, and Mark Beard. Most offenses don't play four offensive tackles, and I think what we saw today is there's a reason why they've played four offensive tackles. None of them have been able to get the job done. So Missouri now, we don't know the uh, status of James Franklin yet as to how much action he might miss. But Matty Mock held his own. They kept it pretty simple for him, completed all three of his passes for 23 yards. We, we, we talked a lot about Missouri coming in and potentially changing up the SEC East. And, and I think they have the, the players, they have the potential to do that, but they're not going to do it with Matty Mock. They need James Franklin if they're going to make a, a play for the SEC East. This will be another touchback, and we'll come on to the 25. All right, Florida's got LSU later today. South Carolina is rolling right now. They're going to beat Arkansas. Who's the team to beat in your mind in the SEC East based on what you saw here today and the other scores around the country? Well, beginning of the year was Georgia, right? And with all these injuries, they're, they're not going to be the one. Florida's got a big game against LSU. They can prove themselves. Their defense, I think uh, Murphy has played much better uh, than Jeff Driscoll. He's playing more conservative, but he's also making plays when they're there. Uh, it'll be a great matchup between Missouri and Florida in a couple of weeks because I think you have to have, with a healthy James Franklin, you've got to have Missouri in that conversation. And the way Connor Shaw is playing, and with Davis running the ball, and Clowney, as uh, Murray's in trouble here, can't rule out South Carolina as Green makes the catch. And clock running. Let's get the latest on Franklin from Tom. Guys, you just saw James Franklin walking out with the training staff here at Missouri. He's in a sling. The x-rays were negative, so that's a positive for James Franklin going forward. They're calling it a right shoulder strain. No other further prognosis at this point. Three straight home games coming up, Lukes, for Missouri. Murray going to go deep here. Going for Wooten. It is overthrown and incomplete. Wooten had to break that up. Otherwise, it would have been picked off by Braylon Webb. But Missouri's got Florida, South Carolina, and Tennessee back to back to back in Columbia with a 6-0 record, 2-0 in league play, but maybe without their quarterback. Yeah, and I think to beat Florida, you know, the way that Florida is going to come out and play in man-to-man -man with their corners, they've got four of them that are NFL caliber corners. That's the matchup against these wide receivers that I most want to see. And, and you want to see that with a healthy James Frank, and you hope that... It's, it's just a weak injury and not something longer. They run the ball there just to make sure they get the first down. Clock restarts. Um, they're ready for play. Here's first and ten from Murray. And there's a flag down and another drop. Two penalty markers down. Arthur Lynch dropped it. We saw Conley and Reggie Davis have drops earlier. Well, Missouri had 12 men on the field. I know that's one of the penalties. I'm not sure if there's another. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. I had 12 players on, on the field. They, they almost gave up a huge play still and should have been caught. And they'd have the ball around the 40-yard line. And in Missouri territory, had Lynch been able to make the catch. Murray in the Missouri territory is Conley down to the 41. So the clock will stop to reset the football on the chains. 19-yard gain there. And what are the realistic expectations for Georgia now with the injuries? You don't know if you'll get Gurley back. They got Vanderbilt on the road. Then Florida and Jacksonville on November 2nd. Also have to go to Auburn. Murray's pass is caught at the 30-yard line. Another first down. Well, you have to anticipate you are going to get Gurley back. You know, that high ankle sprain, sometimes you can, there's a lot of doubt as to when guys can come back. But if you get him back, I mean, that's a significant piece. Then you get Michael Bennett back. In a couple of weeks, I think there'll be a much better offense with those two guys. Murray's pass deflected incomplete. How much the injuries of last week affect the psyche of Murray and the Georgia players in this game a week well, later? I, 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 I really respect the way that, that Georgia played offensively today. It's not like they came out in a shell. It's not like they... Uh, that they didn't have heart or passion today. The, the problem is the, the margin for error is razor thin. And when you have three turnovers, you, you fumble the ball twice, you had a sack fumble, and then that last interception from Aaron Murray, you're not going to be able to overcome that. 
And another pick thrown by Murray. Brother steps in front of that pass. Missouri will take over and win the ball game. Kentrell Brothers with his third interception. That's now 13 picks on the season for Missouri, most in the country. And this is a team to watch, folks, in the SEC. Their first road win against a top 10 team since 1981. It was AM last year that surprised people in the SEC coming from the Big 12. It's Missouri in 2013. And the only thing that they're worried about leaving Athens today is their quarterback, is the health of their quarterback. And it's a big question mark. It's a big reason. What happened to him a year ago with the torn labrum and concussions and MCLs and all those things, if Missouri is going to continue to threaten in the SEC East, he's got to get healthy and healthy in a hurry because the Gators are coming to Columbia. Again, Florida's got that big one with LSU later today. South Carolina beat Arkansas. So they're two and one. We've got South Carolina at Tennessee. The noon game on ESPN next Saturday. That's a great win for Missouri. We give credit to Missouri's defense. Those pass rushers, Sam, Ely, Golden, they can get after it. Big reason why they won the game today. One of the biggest wins in recent history for the Missouri Tigers. Gary Pinkle's team still unbeaten, 6-0, and for real, in the SEC. And George's slim hopes of being in the national championship picture essentially end with the second loss. Previous loss just by three to Clemson, but obviously with the injuries and the loss today, still a shot to win the SEC, but not the national title. Here's Tom. Coach, a tough road contest. You get your quarterback dinged, hostile environment. What do you have to say for your team's performance today? We battled, you know, we battled. Turnovers obviously were huge in this game, as they are in any big close game. And, uh, you know, they played great defense and good offense in the third quarter. And that fourth quarter, we got the momentum finally back on our side. But uh, uh, it was a battle. How would you assess the performance of your front four on defense today? Well, they, you know, they, they're very competitive. We, we play a lot of guys in there, seven, eight guys. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're relentless, and they, I thought they did a lot of good things. You're a confident team coming in. Now you look at the stretch going forward, but you've got some games in Columbia. What does this mean for your football team to get this win today? Well, I, these guys are, these guys battle, man. This is a special group of guys, and I said that this summer. So I'm really proud of them, and you know what? We haven't played our best game yet. We still get better. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Obviously, we'll wait and see about the status of James Franklin going forward as Missouri will return to Columbia with three straight home games. Two.